right. Is this season 46? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Oh, I, I think can look at my folder let's, if you want. We could just, just go over it. Let's just call it's it wrong, season it's 46, and if it's actually if 47, it's... then that's fine. We'll skip a season. We'll have a dead season that we never discuss ever again. Didn't we do that before? Yeah, yes. we've got one that's like a blank space. Yeah, that oh, was really yeah. and we don't and we don't talk about it. It's good that you've forgotten about it. That's right. Yeah, I completely forgot that we did that. Whew. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Spine Chill Season Forty Six. One of your co-hosts here, John Wolf, here with another co-host, uh, Gary the Hot Cross. Hello. Uh, we've got Sino Beats in the house. Hi, everyone. And uh, our junior co-host Doug Running Man has joined us once again. Thank you so much. 47 times in a row. Hi, thank it. you for having me. Thank you for inviting me yet again. Um, that it's no problem. Was deserved. Thank you. It's no problem at all. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How are you guys doing? How was your week? Oh, best week ever. God, I had a great week. I'm oh, good. <laughs> I had a great week. Like, what, Gary? I had <laughs> a great week. What you say? You're oh. like, oh, it's oh. a great week. <laughs> She's just reliving how great it was. It's been a really Ugh. good week. It's yeah. just been, just been a great week. No, I've had a nice week too. Nice couple of weeks, yeah. to be honest. I played a bit of Baldur's Gate 3. Um, finally, getting to experience that a bit more. Been playing some Dread X games, which has been fun. Mm. Um, into chilling, like recharging. It's been good. That's good. Yeah. I've been playing some Did Baldur's I? Gate 3 myself. Oh, yeah? How, how, where are you, Axe? I'm almost at... I think I can get into Act 2 now, if I want to. I just finished Act 2, and I'm about to start Act 3. I'm going to take a little break. Mm. I like to take a little break in between the acts. That's a smart mm. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to like run around and do some cleaning up around the... Like, I've got a bunch of quests to finish off. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm going to go into Act 2. Okay, nice. Man. Yeah, Act 2 is quite a bit different than Act 1. Very tonally different. Oh, I'm really? Excited. Yeah, I'm excited for you to, to experience it. I'm, I'm, yeah, because I'm quite enjoying it. It's quite nice to like be able to learn more about the characters and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's like the best part of playing it solo is getting to, uh, you know, get all the characters' stories. The, the, um, the bit that like caught me off guard at the moment was I was like, I thought Lazel hated me. Yep, and then she and offered then, to sleep with you. Yep, that's exactly was, what happened to me too. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Do you want to be my girlfriend? And she's like. Ah, no, I want to ride you. And I was yeah. like, um, no, thank you. Yeah, I had to turn her down too. I had to let her down gently. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think I, I think I cut her off. I was like, does and she, I'm done talking to you. Does she it's, get it's, mad? She seems like she'd get mad. She kind of... She's like, go away. She wasn't, she wasn't thrilled. Yeah. Right. Disappointed. Yeah. I, I think that, um, <clears throat> like, all the characters, like, uh, they're... they're they they all want you, but then they all they're always very understanding when when you deny them. I've had that experience so many times. I think like every cast member has hit on me at some point, and I've rejected all of them except weird. for Carlac. And they've all just been like, "Oh, that's cool. I understand. Perfectly understandable." Kind of a weird flex, John. Kind of a weird that's flex. <laughs> well, no, it's like a Persona game. Like they all just want to fuck the protagonist. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's they for like, the best that, that the art doesn't maybe, resemble life there. That you yeah. don't have any moments where they're like, Oh, fuck you, you're ugly anyway. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they just like walk out of the cab. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. You got to spies or anything. Nobody wants to fuck you. Yeah. It was just a test. <laughs> you're a bit anyway, little bro. Fuck you. It was all a joke. It was a prank. <laughs> it made me laugh how different, like, because Gail came on to me as well. And we had like, this uh, cute little magic. Fuck off. It's this cute little magic spell bit. And I was like, oh, this is sweet. And like, you know, you imagine holding hands. It's like, oh, it's so sweet. And then Lazel was like, I'm going to fuck you so hard. And I was like, whoa, oh. this is a very different tone. Does Gil ah. remind any of you guys a little bit of Gary? No. Because I little, fucking hate a Gil. A little bit. And I, and I love Gary. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's where it, I was going for. No, just kidding. Just no, Gil, oh, Gil, Gil reminds shit. me a little bit of Gary, but not no, really. No, He's got no. this kind of cheeriness about him. No. It's like. Gail's a I'm... fucking snake, man. Gary's not a snake. Gary's snake. A... Trust... Yeah, snake. Yeah, what, did Gail, what did Gail do to you, Doc? Yeah, I, I, I don't like, think it was that bad, was he? I, is, it, is this a spoiler? I don't like. No, he seems quite nice to me so far. My, I was doing a, I was doing an evil playthrough, so maybe it's different because of the evil playthrough. 
Oh, so he, he didn't was, like you because you were evil. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> oh. probably. Are you getting like, a lot of Gail he, disapproves of this he's just, messages? Yeah, he, was, he was cunty to me a lot, and I didn't like his little <laughs> fucking tone. I didn't like his little tone, his little attitude. So. Oh, I didn't like your evil like decisions. You I mean, like you know, decided to just he, kill people He's not randomly. the protagonist, and they're all supposed to want to fuck me, and Gail was just <laughs> judging me all the time. You know? <laughs> So, you were just no, slaughtering tieflings left and right, and Gail was like, "I, I killed don't the think that that's grove. the right thing to do." I killed you the killed the entire, entire grove, grove and I you did, have the yeah. nerve. You have the nerve to judge Gail. I can't believe this. I can, don't I, like can, him. I, can I complain about one thing in Baldur's Gate Three? Yes. No. Right. Next topic. <laughs> 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 Moving on. So, Gary, so, why is the critically acclaimed game of the generation not up to your standards? <laughs> There's one. <laughs> the game's great. The game's great. There was mm -hmm. one bit where I was in the goblin castle bit, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. And you have to go in, interrogate some guy and get some information to find house in, I think. I'm like, where, where's this house oh, in, Oh, yeah. Chap? Yeah. And, then, and so I'm talking to these three generals that are around, the drow lady and the other two. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm trying to get close to the interrogation target. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go torture him. I'll torture him for you. I'll do. I'll get the information because in my head, I'm like, that's how I get close without having to kill everybody, you know. And I've got Gale and Shadowheart behind me going, I disapprove of this. I'm like, I'm just saying I'm going to torture him, right? right? And it's, yeah. So, I'm, so I'm getting multiple that times them disapproving. Sometimes. Then I get to the guy, I release him. I don't torture him at all. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. No. No, no approval. No yeah. nothing. I was like, so in this in this world, actions don't speak louder than words. Oh. Yeah, no, I, 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 uh, actions. I have run to that scenario a couple times where I like, I was like, I'll just say that I'm going to do the thing, and then I say it, and then the, my squad's just like, that's morally reprehensible. <laughs> Except Lazelle. Like, well, She's like, yet. yeah, yeah, so yeah go torture. You might as well just full send. They're going to hate you yeah. anyways. So might as well just Wow, okay. We're, yeah. we're, not, we're not all the dark urge, Doug. <laughs> I don't know if I is like that, the tone on that. Is that, what you, is that what you were playing? You kind of reminded me of Gale all of a sudden, John. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the Gale hair. No, that's funny. Yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying so it. Though. It's a great game. Yeah, I, I got. I only got I, like 20 hours in, so I never finished. I should probably go back and finish it. Hmm. I, I enjoy what it, the time I spent in it for sure. Very. I think the reason why. I think I'm like 80 hours in or so right now. I've been doing like everything that you can do as far that's as awesome. I can tell. Anyway, I think there's like a couple tiny things I've skipped, but I'm trying to do all the side quests. It's hard though. There's a lot of them. I imagine there's probably quests you can't do because you've made other decisions. Mm. So. I lost a, I lost a lot of quests on Killing mm. the Grove. <laughs> yeah, like, I made choices to just murder yeah, everyone. Yeah, all those and characters just... that died in the Grove and all their side quests, you miss out on them by killing did, them. Yeah. I see. But do you get more so, for like... Combat efficiency, boys. Because I guess you could side with the goblins? And I'm guessing yeah. you get different quests from them? Apparently, you can recruit um, the drow lady, Minthara, um, if you oh. side with them, if you side with the goblins and you burn the grove to the ground. She likes that because she's, she's an evil character, so. Oh, she I murdered on your the party. shit oh, out I, of her. I killed her, like, immediately, yeah. And then, I, and then like, uh, I could take her <laughs> camp clothes off of her body, and I was like, yeah. that's really weird. And I was like, wait, was she, like, a playable character? That didn't click for me. I just took her clothes. Yeah, I, I took her clothes and I, I put them on Shadowheart because they fit her really well. <laughs> and then I took Shadowheart's clothes. Genocide Barbie exchange. over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and Mathara wanted to burn the grove to the ground. She was like, let's kill all the tea. Like, I, I like walked up to her and I was like, hi, I'm, you know, so and so. And she was like, let's kill all the tieflings. I want to kill all the tieflings. <laughs> and I was like, well, you're you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't like her tone with me because I was. I'm a drow as well. Yeah. And I was like, you haven't got to be such an asshole to me. Oh. Yeah. She was like real shitty to me, and like I just I don't know. I was quite happy to kill her. Yeah. There's yeah. I I would say my main complaint with Baldur's Gate three is that there's there's so many scenarios where I encounter a character that I'm like, well, I just want to kill them. And then we just fight, which is fine. I like the combat, but I kind of wish there was more nuanced situations where I'd want to like negotiate my way through, um, or like you know, I guess dialogue-driven gameplay. 
don't know if this happens maybe later on, but I hope some of the villains get away. Hmm. Because like I'd like it that if you know what's her, what's her name Minthara. Yeah. It'd have been cool if if I tried to kill her. If she's a recruitable, that would be like it'd be cooler if if you didn't recruit her, she became like a continual villain. You kind of kept bumping <clears throat> into. I don't know. But yeah. I was still in Act One, so I'm. I don't know shit what's going to happen. So. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, Baldur's Gate Three. That's been Cry. very fun. <clears throat> Good. Yeah, I like. I want to get right into Baldur's Gate Three, but there's just been so many. Especially all these like Japanese RPG games have been coming out lately, so it's like every time I'm like, ah, oh, I think it's been, it's been I think I'm done too. with Yakuza for a little bit, and then it's like another thing comes out. I'm like, damn, there's what, too many games. What just came out? Dragon's Dogma Two. Oh right. So yeah. how's that? So the performance is pretty bad at the moment. I constantly was having the game crash unless I capped it to 30 FPS, which you, you get used oh. to, right? At first yeah, you're right. like, yeah. you get used fine. to it for a while. Like, I can play it for the time being just to get around this crashing issue, but it does sometimes like freeze up when I get into combat and things like that. So they do need to work on that. Some people have no issues. It's just like a kind of luck of the draw thing. Um, but there's obviously been some chat about the microtransactions in the game. Right. I think overall the microtransaction stuff is a bit like the way it was in Devil May Cry 5 and Resident Evil 4 Remake, where you can play it without using it. Yeah, it's like the new Capcom strategy, seems yeah. like, is to fill their new games with that. So it's like, these microtransactions are a little cringe, do you know what I mean? I'm not always like a huge fan of them being in the game, but it hasn't like ruined the experience, you know? Yeah. I haven't been sat there like, oh, you want to... You want basic human rights? You've got to pay five dollars, and they're like dangling it in front of me. Right. At least so far, I've only played it for like seventy hours, but so far it's amazing. Actually, I think it's what, fantastic. What can you, it's just maybe what can you buy? What can yeah, you buy? I'm curious. So you can buy. There's like a currency called Rift Crystals, which you get when you like trade your pawns enemy, which is like one of the main things of the game, where you make a character and then they go out with other people and join their games and come back, but they also play it with you. Um, so when you do certain things, you get a thing called Rift Crystals, which is often related to that which can unlock certain things <clears throat> there's also like money in game which you can like bypass with dlc um but for example it's like you can get like tens of thousands of gold quite early so you're not like completely starved for money i still want it like i'm still i'm still making bank i'm still grinding for that paper i'm still hustling right. but right it's not completely like everything fucking sucks until you pay five dollars for the sparkle pony or whatever you know yeah can i uh, so, so is is this whole this whole thing because there's a, also a controversy right with microtransactions and like helldivers 2 <clears throat> you're able to buy some things in helldivers 2 that you can also grind for or you can just skip the grind to buy the stuff like i feel mm -hmm. like it's probably similar to that in dragon's dogma right like that's kind of a similar thing like anything you can buy you can grind but you're just you're spending money to like take a shortcut basically am i understanding pretty much like like mobile games, so, right? In Dragon's so, Dogma 2 as well, actually, I had a really nice experience where I wanted to find where an item was yesterday and just nobody knows yet. Yeah, it's so that's nice to have fun. a game that that's hasn't been awesome. like data mined. Yeah, yeah. That's it's awesome. not just all I on a wiki that. yet. Right. I love, I love it. it. What I was gonna say is, is this is this microtransaction shortcut thing, is this becoming like the new people that are pissed off about easy modes in video games? Like the people that were there, there used to remember there was a big controversy with like Dark Souls and Elden Ring for not having like difficulty levels. So like people that were kind of more casual weren't able to experience the game. And then it like started this whole war between like hardcore gamers and casual gamers being like easy mode gamers aren't gamers and stuff. Like I kind of, I, I don't know if, if, this, if this is tracking with you guys, but it sort of feels like one of those freedom of choice type things that like a lot of people in the gaming community like push back on where it's like you can a lot of people think you should have the choice to play on an easy mode or a hard mm -hmm. mode a lot of people think you shouldn't a lot of people think hey i want to experience the game but i don't have 60 hours a week to grind the game let me take a couple shortcuts by spending money because i have a pretty good nine to five and i can afford that you know what i mean yeah Is that, you guys understand what i'm saying like that's the commentary okay. i've seen i've seen a lot yeah. of people complaining about microtransactions and hell divers and complaining about microtransactions and dragon's dogma and it just turns into one of those like People, I, I feel like what I've experienced and what I've seen, it seems like people that are criticizing people's freedom of choice at this point. Like, it's not, you don't have to do it. No one has to buy the DLC. Nobody has to spend the money yeah. for the extra Helldivers money or the extra Dragon's Dogma currency, right? So, so I would, I can think of how people would 
counter what you just said, Doug. And then I think how I would feel about it as well. Okay. Is that some people would counter what you just said with, why should I have to pay extra money if I want to play an easy mode? But for me, personally, I often get quite bored of a game if I feel like it's too handholdy, too easy, too convenient. Same. I like a little challenge with it. Um, I like how in Dragon's Dogma 2, sometimes it's like, it, the quest says it's in that area, but it's mm -hmm. not just like, here's the arrow, go here. Because yeah. then, then I'm constantly checking the map and I'm just like beelining to the arrow and I get frustrated yeah. when everything stops me. Because it's like, I know where I want to go, just let me go there. Whereas with Dragon's Dogma 2, sometimes it's like, it's in this area. So I get to the area, I'm like, right, I'm going to explore. I'm going to take a look around. And I much prefer that. I think it's more immersive. And I think if everything was just a mode that you could switch on, it would kind of start to feel sometimes like, why am I not just doing that? But if it's something I have to pay for, I'm like, oh, I'm choosing not to pay for it. It's, just, it's like, that's a very personal thing, I guess. Yeah. But I like how it's not just something that I click a button and it's like, oh, I could have just had more money. I could have just made twice as much money. Instead, it's like, I'm choosing not to buy that thing, so it's not a part of my game. So I but have this more is, challenge. Th this is why I was asking, like, what you can buy. Like, if it's just cosmetics and things to help you, and it's all optional, it's not something you need, it's something you can just want. Mm. I don't know why anyone's complaining. It's not just cosmetics. So that is the... It, it is gameplay. Yeah, gameplay affecting things. But, like, but so. it's, something like, you can, it's something you can earn. It's just you get it instantly if you buy it, right? Yeah. 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 So nothing's, nothing's I, behind a paywall in this. In yeah, nothing's think, exclusively behind the paywall. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think my, my biggest point is that you can earn this stuff and it's not like crazy hard. Right. Right. It's not like you're going to spend 40 hours to try and get one yeah. of these items or you can just buy it for like five dollars but i do get the complaint as to why people think it's a bit lame when the first thing you see on the page is like here's here's extra key pass where you could get extra get out of jail free key for see, 99 cents so here's how i would look this is how i see microtransactions i see a game like this wow there's more ways for people to be able to support this game to put money back into it so they continue to develop it that means I'm going to get more content because if there's people putting more money into the game continually, there's reason for them to keep working on it. Mm -hmm. Like I have, yeah. game, I've heard gamers sometimes a lot. forget that if you just buy a game for forty dollars and then you're you're never going to put any more money back into it, the community buys it all at the at the start and then there's no more DLC, no more ways to give it money. The developers go build something else and they stop adding content. <laughs> and on right. online games, that means eventually you finish playing it. Um, like I like I'm very I'm pro microtransactions as long as it's optional. Yeah, right. optional yeah, you, stuff. You prefer like cosmetic. Like I I very much agree that like the cosmetics approach I think is the best because I don't want a game to feel like they've taken things out of it to try and sell it back to you. Later, what either. was that game that did that? Was it Divinity or something? Not Divinity. D um, Divinity. Divinity. No. Uh, no it was, oh, it, was so. it was by the Halo guys. Bungie. They made that. Uh, does it begin with D? Destiny. Destiny, yeah. Destiny, didn't, they, yeah. didn't they cut out loads of stuff and then put it as DLC for the mm -hmm. first one? Like, especially mm -hmm. when you can feel like the base game had it and they took it out rather than, like, something they developed later and then they added it. Mm -hmm. It always feels a little gross. Or, um, I will say, in, like, in Dragon's Dogma 2, you do get these things that allow you to fast travel that take, like, a little grinding to get, but you can just yeah. buy them with DLC. And that's something that... It's, like, that's a convenient spend. I can see why some people are like, this is kind of annoying that... You can daddy warbucks your way through fast yeah. traveling through that game if you want. And some people would be like, if I don't have a lot of time because I'm a, a mother or father, I shouldn't have to pay extra money for it. But right. to what you said, Gary, I think a lot of AAA game developers are starting to say games need to be more expensive to cover the cost of this because of like inflation. We're starting and stuff. to see it. We're starting to see no, the, the layoffs. Yeah, I mean, get, yeah. yeah. Games are getting more expensive. And that's a I mean, whole other argument. But yeah, Skull and Bones like, came out, was it like 70 at launch or something like that? Yeah, they're trying. They're pushing that seventy dollars price point now instead of sixty. Yeah. Um, which honestly, like, I don't know. It makes sense. Games are more expensive now than they ever have been, and they've been sixty dollars for forever. I remember buying N sixty four games that were sixty dollars. Yep. Right. And that was you know twenty five years ago. Inflation is crazy. So I don't know. I'm I'm not like against paying seventy bucks, but it is uh it is going to be a little expensive for just a regular consumer to, uh, to like play every game that comes out. So you have to be a little bit choosier with the games that you play um, as a result. Um, 
Yeah, I think with microtransactions, I don't know, I, I, as long as they're completely optional, I have no problem with it. Like, my stance is like, well, I'm just not going to pay for it. Like, RE4 Remake came out with a bunch of these microtransactions similarly of just like, oh, here's a bunch of like extra stuff that you can earn in the game, but you can get it right away. And I was like, well, playing the game is fun, so I'm not going to buy those. And no. like, if an, you know, if it's, it's, all, it's like total free market to me. It's like, mm, if, agree, you, yeah. if you don't want it, then don't buy it. Don't well, like, complain that it exists, you know? I don't get that viewpoint. There are, there are people that I've heard that kind of complain about FOMO and like feeling like you're, you're missing out or wasting time. And so like, it's like they're abusing people's like natural wow. instincts to feel like they're missing out because they want to get stuff quicker. Cause like if you're, skill if you're issue. using, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, skill artists, issue. artists, artists, maybe you're a little bit too worried about what everybody else is up to and just enjoy your experience directly. Cause again, what you're talking about, John, with the ability to like unlock stuff quicker, but you can unlock it in game that like drives me to play the game more because I want to like, get one over on it like i yeah. want to get this stuff this stuff that people can yeah, pay for wanna... i want to get this stuff for free let's fucking go yeah. dude i'm gonna grind yeah, you wanna, that yeah you want to yeah. stick it to the man yeah exactly <laughs> so for me it's like that's a plus that's a thumbs that's up that's such a great like, way of putting it yeah <laughs> yeah it's it yeah. is fun as well to have like something to aim for but yeah yeah i do yeah. understand as well when people are like especially with online pvp games or online games in general it's like another Ooh. battle pass you Ooh, know what I know. Yeah. I will talk about the game we're going to talk about today, Pokemon Unite. That had some pay to win elements when it first launched. When you were, your held items, you guys remember this? I don't yes. know if you remember, but when the game first launched, your held items were like massive stat boosts, right? Yeah. And it took a long time to grind it, or you could just use the in game, like the money currency to buy tickets to level it up like really fast. And mm -hmm. I literally did it when we were, when the game launched. I like spent $100 or some shit to get like all the, the meta held items right away so that I could go into ranked and immediately be like, yeah, like, you know, being able to compete with other people in rank. Should so. we, for the sake of stamping the video, time stamping the podcast officially go into the Pokemon Unite segment. It felt like a very good segue. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, wasn't DLC, I was, blah blah blah. We'll talk about it more with Pokemon, Pokemon Unite. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon yeah. Unite was yeah. our book club it'll, game that Doug chose blur. last episode. It'll blur. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Expert, expertly done. Junior co-host Doug. Uh, that was good. That was good. Very good He's transition. Learning. That's a plus yeah. one to your Love hidden that. scorecard. So put your hidden scorecard. Yeah. Hidden scorecard. Uh, I'm, I'm putting a tally is... mark right now next to uh, ingenuity. So a short I mark. <laughs> I like to think that Doug's scorecard is like a grade schooler like tree. And he like goes up and down the branches of the tree if he's done like yeah. a good day or a yeah, bad day. Yeah, I've got day. like a little like Doug voodoo doll that I move up yeah. and down. Yeah. It's just yeah. drawn drawn on a paper plate, right? Something yeah. like that. So you went up a branch today with that Ooh. one, Doug. Well All done. Right. I told you it was a good week. I can yeah. tell. Yeah, tell me. Right. I'm not going to tell you what United. branch you're on, but you did go up a branch. I wouldn't want to know. <laughs> yeah. Too much anxiety. You're no longer on the ground, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Huge. Unless the, unless the branch falls. The branch I mean, can that, break. <laughs> A bad day of behavior, and the branch will break. <laughs> <laughs> so Pokemon Unite! So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, that I've, now, that, now, that, now that I've been, yeah, now that I've been intimidated properly get a by gold the star. Like, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about Pokemon Unite. We had a lot of fun. Um, we played primarily last weekend, I think, right? It was mm -hmm. John and John and Sino and I started off, and then John tagged out and Gary tagged in, and we all got a chance mm -hmm. to kind of play with each other and. I mean, what do we think, guys? Like, I, I obviously you know how I feel about the game, but what do I, you guys think coming back? Because none, none of you have played like since the initial wave, right? No, I, I no. wanted to play uh, some solo, and I just never got around to it. But I did want to because uh, I had fun playing the game together. Um, but for anyone that doesn't know what Pokemon Unite even is, I'm not sure how much we talked about it last episode. It's, it's basically it's a MOBA, a multi multiplayer online battle arena. It's like League of Legends, uh, Dota 2, you know, all these games where uh, it's basically... Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, he didn't even say Heroes yeah. Yeah. Heroes of the Storm. Yeah. Well, wow. Like, like, Don't like not going to mention it. Real games. Are games so that haven't died. Games that are dead. dead. You know how much mm. I love dead games, Lloyd. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. That was a like uh, couple therapy subject. just then. <laughs> you always do that. You know how much I love dead games. You always bring it up. <laughs> Um, yeah, but it's um, there's like a tower defense element if you've never seen a MOBA game. Uh, there's uh, five Pokemon on one side, five Pokemon on the other side, and you kind of split up throughout the map. Uh, 
Usually uh, two people pair off at the top of the map, two people pair off at the bottom of the map, and then there's one that goes in between, the jungler. And uh, the match lasts 20 minutes, is that right? Ten. Or 10 minutes? 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. Minutes, yeah. 10 minutes. They're pretty quick rounds. Um, and uh, you basically just try to kill the other Pokemon, steal their points, uh, score them in their base, and uh, uh, it's it's just a fun, fun little like semi-competitive game. I would say it's not like super sweaty. Although people, the people that we were playing against, I was surprised at how like crazy they were. They were like taking it very seriously, which you know, I, I mean, I took it seriously after the first match or so. I was like, okay, I'm zoned in now. Um, but yeah, it's a fun little uh, multiplayer-only uh, PvP game. It's free to play. It's available on Switch and mobile. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. Oh, you can tell it's on mobile. Oh god. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Gary, yeah. Gary, Gary, would you, Gary, would you like to tell everybody about the UI? I already. Oh, feel awesome. I, as soon as I saw it, Gary, I was like, Gary's gonna hate this UI because I hate it, and I'm much easier to please. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so much. When I opened the game up for the first time, everything had red dots on it to be read and yep. investigated to what yep. and you and because the switch is a slow sluggish mm -hmm. piece of shit sometimes you're like trying to navigate through these menus to like get your battle pass done and your welcome back tokens and here's some more things oh you finished this quest and like you're clicking for about 10 minutes to get through this stuff which feels like it happens every time you log in because mm -hmm. it's like a mobile game so it's like every time you log in for the first time on the day everything's lit up red to be clicked on there's so much to do it it's overwhelming it's it's stress inducing yeah i i couldn't like i don't remember how the ui was beforehand it's always but been this it way. feels like oh that's it's down there with vhs for for <laughs> ui oh, wow <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that was a real, was, a real was, bad uh, UI. Yeah, that means it's bad guys. Yeah, because oh. I think the UI was always like that. It's just that they've added more, so it's yeah. more overwhelming. It's just more. Yeah, it's I more think that was always their plan because of all the floated. Updates, right? yeah. yeah, and it's also got that thing because it has to be designed for small screens. All of the elements on the screen are like really large, so that you can yeah. like press them on like a small screen. So when you're playing on like. Uh, game capture for your Switch on your fucking computer monitor. It's <laughs> very busy. It's yeah, very it's... overwhelming. Red Dot, Red Dot, you've got to check yeah. it. you got to claim your five tickets. you got to claim your five <laughs> of this currency so that you can roll at the lottery machine. Yeah. yeah. To get well, some medallion thing that you... Who cares? There's and like no, today... ten different currencies too. Yeah. I, I like. It's insane. There's yeah, so many it's different just, ones. It's just such a mobile game. And it's a shame, too, because once you're actually in the physical game, it's incredible, right? It's a really clean, smooth nice experience. It's really fun. Great yeah. HUD. Every, there are no complaints. From start to finish in match, for me, no complaints. But mm. from the UI to the the system lag when you're selecting your Pokemon, like there's just so many. like yeah. I have a lot of complaints about about the actual like the technical experience of playing the game but once in once i'm in the match I'm it's not it's not cross-platform is it there's no mobile play it is like cross-platform this... nope it's oh. cross-platform yeah my kid plays on mobile with me like all the time i was gonna say like they could just separate it out but yeah yeah it's the same way i felt about dragon's dogma 2 it's like once you get past all of that the actual game itself both both games are actually really good um, mm -hmm. Pokemon we Unite is... had segued away from that. <laughs> I'm still Stop talking about, about dogma. I don't even go to church, and Garrett. And Sinnoh so goes down a branch. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. I am the tree. I am the tree. Wait. Uh, but yeah, it's like once you get past all this bullshit, Pokemon Unite <laughs> is great. Like I think it's a very good alternative to these other MOBA games where. It's like it's great to have a game that's just it's done in ten minutes. So if you're having a shit yeah. one, which regularly you have some stupid fucking shit fucking Zara Aura that goes mid lane and doesn't know how to jungle and just stays in your lane the whole time and just dies yeah. anyway, it's fine because it's over in ten minutes. Yeah. So it's great. I mean, it doesn't it's, stop people it, voting to surrender every two seconds that they die. No. Oh my god! Me and Sino played some together as well the other night, and we we had like multiple matches where people were like immediately trying to like give up. Yeah, that's it's like oh, you it's need to. Why are you in such a bad mood? Stop playing the game. Go have your milk, go have a little lie down, and then come back and play Pokemon Unite. Because these people have will go milk. one minute into the game your and then be like, Blue milk surrender. Or... Yeah, milk. go have your milk. Go have your daily milk. I've never heard that. Go have, some, go have your milk. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going along this like school teacher route today, apparently. Like go have that. some turkey dinosaurs. Yeah, You've fallen nice. off a branch on the tree. <laughs> it's... 
It's nice to have a, a it's nice to have a mobile you can get a couple matches in like two or three matches in like on a lunch break, right? Like it's pretty Stop. pretty nice. Like. Somebody Siri or Google, yeah. <laughs> Doug's Google. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I heard why are you so sure it was me? What, how, how do you know it was me? Because you were shouting at it. Shut up! Shut no, up, Alexa! I thought you were like shouting at someone, which you I know thought you were shouting at a robot. The audio only people aren't going to know about that, Gary. You just dived me out, bro. Like, <laughs> That's what true. A snitch. What a snitch. Audio only would have never known. <laughs> no, it's just nice to have a game that you know, because whenever you, when you play League or when you play Dota, it's an in, that's an investment, man. It like, is. That's that's a lot. Of, a lot a of League matches like forty minutes. Forty minutes Easily. sometimes, yeah. Yeah, me, yeah, they can be. Yeah, those are kind of not great. Um, even even when... Aram matches can be like half an hour long. I played some Aram last night on League, and it's like the matches never end. And those that's like the quick game mode. So yeah. 10 minutes is a godsend for sure. I feel like yeah. in League, the main Summoner's Rift has gotten like a little shorter than it used to be, but ARAMs feel really long now. Yeah. Sometimes it's like 20 minutes and it's like, this is supposed to be the giggly baby mode where everybody just fires off the abilities and then one side wins. But sometimes I feel like I'm slugging it out of like yeah. eight, nine deaths coming back into lane like... Come on, boys! We gotta win we this. Want it's like we got more tired. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I, I, don't, I wanna just GG next. I don't know how much you guys want to talk about Pokemon Unite, but that could segue into a really interesting conversation. I think about like how the landscape of gaming is changing, and that's really to me is like highlighted in Dead by Daylight because we've all at periods of times been you know heavy Dead by Daylight players, but like. I just feel like there really is no such thing as casual gaming anymore. Like, I think that the landscape has changed completely. Not, not in the online space. And not in the online space. No, gaming definitely not in the yeah. online. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, like you just said, ARAM is supposed to be the giggly fun habit. No, man. People are, there are fucking mobilytics guides for, for ARAM out there that you can look up to like <laughs> maximize your performance in ARAM. Like, that's, people yeah. are min maxing ARAMs in League of Legends now. Like, yeah. that's where, that's where online gaming culture has gotten to. In terms of like, they're just really. I I don't know if there's ever going to be an, another safe haven in online multiplayer gaming again. I remember. Yeah, I know. I totally agree. I, I remember playing uh, that that uh, um like ultimate party game, Party Animals, several months ago. I don't know if you guys played Party Animals, but um, I mean, it's like it was kind of like Fall Guys a little bit. It was just like you, you're you're a bunch of different like goofy little animals. You try to like push each other off the ledge and stuff. Like ha, ragdoll ha, ha. characters, aren't they? Ra yeah, there's a lot of like ragdoll physics and stuff. It's like the definition of a party game, and people in that game were making me more angry than in any other game I think I've ever played because you can just grief each other, and people would get super sweaty with it. And just like it, they had this mechanic, for example, where you can you can grab another player and then they can't move, unless like like you can kind of struggle out of it or one of your teammates can hit them off of you. But if they don't, they can just kind of hold you there uh, for for a long time. And what some people will do is there'll be a cliff there and they'll just kind of grab you and then just pull you in. They'll be like, "I'm dead, but so are you." And there's not really much you could do about it. Like I said, unless you've got uh, a guardian angel to to help you out. Cause because Fall Guys has that same thing. Fall Guys have the same thing. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah, but Fall Guys is like it's it's usually like a race or something like that. So you mm. can you can like kind of avoid people that are standing around waiting to do that. Uh, but I this... oh, I remember that. Remember that time on Fall Guys? Where I think it was you, was it you, John, that got yes. like the yes. horse guy. Yeah, the yeah, horse guy horse was like guy. on the thing, and I jumped off the point. Like, no, I'm gonna murder him. I'm gonna He's murder gonna die him, as yeah. well. And then he died. That was so yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, party animals is like that moment, just like constantly, all the time, never ending. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and party it's... animals like like it kind of flopped, right? Like it was popular for a little while, people played it on Twitch, and then it just kind of went away, right? I haven't heard that game mentioned in months. And months I haven't and months. either. Yeah, no. um, I think it was yeah, it was very successful for a bit, but I haven't played it in months. It was it was fun, but you know, just to reinforce your point of like people got instantly sweaty, instantly griefing, instantly really competitive in that game. Yeah, I think on Steam charts. Yeah, I wish four thousand people playing right now. I wish Crazy. that the games community, I would just say industry, or the community, we need to maybe get a little bit better at deciding what games are more. Like, cause a lot, a lot of people love playing to win. They love finding out and getting all the information. Like, I don't want to discourage that because I am also quite a competitive gamer and I, I like Same. finding out a good build or coming up with a way that I want to win. 
But I think we need to get a little bit better at having some games that are more encouraging of that. Where it's like, yeah, go for it. And then some games, it's like, it, we don't... When they added Fall Guys as a collaboration to Final Fantasy XIV, and then people had drawn up diagrams of the optimal path to take, so that you always avoided everything every time, so everybody tries to take this one route. It's like, it kind of ruins the, this type of game. You know, like, Fall Guys is not a game that has to be played to the utmost efficiency. Right. We need to Tell have some games that are just... Achievement to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I won it in, in 14 and in Fall Guys. I won plenty. But yeah. I feel like <clears throat> these games, they start to unravel if... I just don't people... think there's... It's never going to go back, though. Like, I don't think yeah. it can yeah. ever go back. Because <laughs> I, think that the, I think that the mindset that you have is not number one the, the the more common mindset anymore i think that the, the fun haver mindset years ago was the most common and i think that the landscape of gaming has changed to the point that the most common mindset is not that fun haver the most common mindset is the youtube video watcher min maxer optimizer play to win i'm trash if i lose so i need to win i need to be the best i want to be like my favorite streamer i want to be like my favorite youtuber i think that's the majority I'm not talking about our generation. I'm talking about the next generation. I'm talking about the the, the average right. player nowadays cares a lot more. And I think that's one of those things where people, and this comes back, circle back to DVD, is where people are like, I wish DVD was the way it was. It can never be the way it was because if DVD was the way it was with the current player base, DVD would be unplayable. Do you think it's um, people chasing that serotonin in some form? Like they just need that that little chasing. bit you get from winning because they can't get it in the game in other ways anymore. I can give it to you in like a real deep philosophical mind, like what I think. It I would is, love. I, think I would love societally. To I think that we are a society very, very, very skinny and very, very lacking in purpose. And so a lot of people kind of whether they they don't feel like what they do for a living is fulfilling. They don't feel like their relationships are fulfilling. They don't feel like their life is fulfilling. They jack themselves up on cheap dopamine constantly and then video games become that caveman barbarian viking warriors purpose in life and like if you don't if you deny your purpose you feel like a failure and so they want to win they want that mm. but they want that they want the the high of the win and they want to be respected in their tribe and their tribe is dbd players their tribe is fucking party yeah, animal slayers right and so yeah. i think that it's just like we have this drive to be successful and video games turn it and i think a lot of it happened when COVID happened and people were on lockdown and they couldn't go out and they couldn't do things that they were doing that gave them purpose prior and so video games became not only their social network with other people but also their primary purpose driven i mean i yeah i mean i'm my next YouTube video is going to kind of talk about this a little bit, but I think there's like a gaming addiction element to a lot of this. And I think, I actually think COVID was a big part of that. Cause I think a lot of people found like a home in video games. And I think, you know, you win at a video game like DVD or Fall Guys, a game where it's, there's a lot of RNG to it and you get that serotonin hit and then you start chasing it <clears> again and again to get that good feeling. But you won't get it again. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't feel as good as like winning in Street Fighter or, you know, killing a really difficult boss in Elden Ring or something like ranking, those things ranking up in League of Legends or Valorant yes right? like, yeah like these things rank, that, like, that's that, that is work so that's a lot more effort whereas if you can win in DBD by stumbling out the exit door you get like a little cut of that and oh. it's a lot easier to do that than it is to you know play League of Legends or you know win a round oh. of Rainbow Six Siege or a game that's like you know challenging I, th I think it's a, I think it's a lot of different things I think it's like a little bit of of the covid lockdown and 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 being like well what am i going to do inside i know video games i think it's a little bit of the serotonin hit i think it's a little bit of all these things that have kind of slowly changed the environment over the years like for example like esports wasn't really mm -hmm. a thing 15 years ago i remember in college like playing starcraft and telling people like you know this is a national sport in south korea isn't that cool and that was like unheard of. People were like, "What? They play a video game? Like a, like an old video game?" Because at that point, StarCraft was pretty. You disgust me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get away from me, sway nerd. Yeah, but now, I mean, esports is like like all the major <laughs> multiplayer games have an esports scene, um, and then like influencer culture has risen so much in that time period too. Like, there's people that are making incredible livings on streams just from their skill in video games. Um, you know, we're all personality based. Uh, 
you know, creators here, but Speak some people yourself, out there, bro. Well, some, people, well, some people out there, like, they have no personality. They just yeah. kind of sit there in silence and really concentrate and what the yeah. content is their skill in the game. Mm -hmm. And um, frankly, you know, I think a lot of people look at all that together. They're like, let's see, I'm inside with nothing to do. I want to do something that's fun, something repeatable. Um, I want to look at maybe a potential career. I want to, you know, this, this whole esports scene. I think it's like all those things together have made people collectively sweatier. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah it, it's one of those. I, had a, I think it was Helldivers 2. I haven't played it myself where there was like a discussion people were having where it was like. Some people, I think, were getting shamed for not running like one optimal build. Yes. Yeah. So, and it yeah. was like it was getting frustrating because I like I like to be a competitive gamer myself, but sometimes I think people are too dogmatic about only this works. This is the only oh. thing that works. Yes, oh. they are. Yeah, you know, it so has to be the one hundred percent best build. And a lot of the time, anybody who's actually skilled at the game would be like, "No, that's not true at all." Yeah. And I think it's a lot of people who have low skill seem to like love to adopt this pro approach where it's like they've googled one build that they know is really good and like is maybe like the most yeah. professional most <laughs> effective and then they love to try and enforce it on other people to make themselves feel yeah. like they're part of coming up with it you didn't come up with jack shit all right but it's like it's, yeah i wish and, you could maybe play all, well without having to play the best i wonder if they also want people to adopt the same play style because then it makes them feel less bad that they had to if they if Maybe. someone beats it with their own creativity, that's gonna take away from the guide they followed, the step by step yeah, YouTube video they followed to do the same thing. That 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 mentality is uh, very very prevalent in card games, like Hearthstone for example. Mm. Like the term net decking is basically yep. you just go online, you look at the deck with the highest win rate from all these API programs, and you just pick that, you copy paste it, and that's your deck. It's Literally like well this deck has a seventy percent win rate, so I'm gonna play that. And then you, you know, grind up to master or whatever, legend, whatever it is, and and that's all you have to do. You don't have to sit there and actually that create a deck. Or that's what a lot of people do. That's I mean, what... like I'll I'll be the counterpoint and, and counter voice say that I like that. I like doing that. That's what I did when yeah. I played Hearthstone. I and I and I don't think that there's anything inherently bad about my brain not working as like an abstract thinker when it comes to like how do I make a cool deck that's gonna counter the things that are in the meta. Like mm. for me, it's like for my caveman brain, it simplifies things down to where I can get to just playing and mastering the counterplay and mastering the deck. Um, I think that where right. the, where it becomes an issue is when you start to, like you said, enforce that on other people. Do you guys remember, like, this is eight years ago when Heroes of the Storm was, like, at its peak. When it was 2016, they had the Heroes Esports Leagues. People were playing the game professionally. That East, It was a big deal. Uh. And do you remember what would happen when you played in ranked and you picked an off-meta Perk yes. or oh boy, do talent. I? The oh guys boy. would, they would, yeah, they would, yeah, they would blow you up in game chat. Like, what are you running that for? What do you? And it's like there was the yeah. constant criticism of other people's builds. I, and, I, I, when I would try to play Lost Vikings or Abatha, oh uh -huh. my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. There'd be people yeah. that would just, they would just end. They'd throw the game because you picked that character. They're like, that character's yeah. trash. You're murky. Yeah. I'm inting. Like they would just throw the game yeah. because you didn't. And they were like, and I'd be sitting there going like, just. Just stay as four. Yeah, I'll cover the lanes. Well, we'll win. Trust me. But they and were like, relentless. Though. Oh yeah, and, and and Heroes of the Storm in, in particular was a game that lent itself well to split pushing and things like that with characters mm. like that were looked down on, like Murky and Abathur and Lost Viking. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's the Dunning Kruger and, effect absolutely and, with those people. And that's and that and that's continued to this day. And like you said, uh, Lloyd brought up Helldivers. Yeah, I've had people come into the chat that were like, Helldivers has a rage quit problem now. When you don't select the right abilities or the right what i don't know if i've never played the game but like when you play online and you match make online people will literally leave the game if you don't choose the right equipment and shit. they're like no no yeah, yeah. we'll find someone who actually knows how to play and it's like yeah. they're just yeah. min max they're min and the devs are literally on social media being like we don't want our game to become a sweaty mix min max game we want it to be fun we want everybody to play their own way and have their own experiences together it's like literally people versus ai it's not even competitive it's like right. it's like lethal company, Le the, um, hell divers. These are games where you get with human beings to fight AI, and people are still like, "You have to be optimal, or I'm not playing with you." Crazy. Yeah. And the margin right. of victory is not that slim. You can no, win it's not. with this stuff. No, you know? like, it's not. No. It, it kind of reminds me of like I remember playing Resident Evil Two Remake, and I was like 
killing every zombie that I saw. And I had I had all these people in the comments being like, this guy clearly didn't play the original because you can't just kill all the zombies and have enough ammo to finish the game. He's going to learn that lesson the hard way. And I was just like, what are you talking about? This game is not that hard. And then I played that way for the rest of the game and it was fine. I finished it. And and they but you know to Sino's point they act like the the margin of victory is like razor thin. It's like if you make oh, yeah. one misstep, it's all over. And it's like <laughs> it sounds like you guys just suck ass at the game to me. I mean, yeah, no, no. Well, these are the people that have been watching. They followed a YouTube video. They were like doing the step for step, and they need you to do it because if you don't, right. they feel less bad or they they feel bad about the way they played it. Maybe Which like runs. subconsciously, right? Is that like yeah, a yeah, yeah? Like I don't yeah, think, yeah. I don't think they're actively thinking about that. That's what they're doing. But I think. There's part of their brain that does not like that you are playing the game. Yeah. They because yeah. like. they they followed the game. They repeated the guide that they followed. They mid max. They did all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, which you know inherently deep down you probably don't feel as accomplished when you just followed someone else's guide on yeah. how to accomplish it. I know I'm gonna sound like a boomer, and we're gonna be the guys yelling at clouds. Have <laughs> like, the face you pulled just before two. I'm saying, I'm just saying, man. Like, when I played Resident Evil 2 for the first time in the late '90s, when it was a new release on my PlayStation, I was, I was blissfully ignorant because there was no YouTube back then. There was no video yeah. for me to watch to know yeah. that I was playing wrong. I just got to play the mm. game and be like, "This is my favorite game. I love this." Yeah. Well, to, to that and point, I, like, I miss those has, days, man. But it's never coming yeah. back. Well, as like I was actually talking to a friend the other day about how. People nowadays, so we were talking about Pokemon, um, mm. and we are talking about Pokemon Gold and Silver, and obviously the big meme oh, is man. Whitney's milk tank. Like, yes. one of the most difficult parts of the game, but it's all in our brain is like, I still feel accomplished for beating it. I can't tell you what I beat Whitney's milk tank for the first time with. I can't tell you, like, what Pokemon, like, what combination, what tactic. I just remember achieving it with whatever random shit I was trying to at some point. Yeah. Um, whereas nowadays... If that exact situation came up, people would be catching, you know, whatever manky or whatever you can get in the bushes nearby and just crushing it with that well, every time. Because that would be the the maximum best way to just beat her. The, the, yeah, there's somebody in that town that has a machop you can trade for. And so, like, oh, if okay. you just want to bring a machop in and just, you know, karate chop the milk tank over and over, you can just win that way. But it's, yeah. it's way more fun to just try to figure it out without any type advantage. And I think like, I think that people don't realize they're cheating themselves out of dopamine. Yeah, by doing yes, that's the exactly it. It's like they're so that eager that to f- just win yeah. to get that cheap yeah. dopamine that yeah. they skip out of the accomplishment of beating it through trial and error. Real, like that real feeling of accomplishment. Like you're just like, fuck yeah, man, that was so hard, and I did it. Like that feels yeah. so good. Like this feels mm. so good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like I'm not trying to say that everybody should just play terribly and always win. But I think, like, sometimes it's, like, it's not so black and white where it's either you have to be SKT T1 at the Korean World's Final of League of Legends Championship or you're a giggly baby idiot that deserves to lose all the time. Sometimes you can play decently well and have fun. And sometimes that is more engaging and it should be allowed than just, why haven't you watched this one YouTuber that has the best build? Why haven't you you optimized? Are you an yeah. imbecile? Optimized. Why are you, why are oh, you not simply optimized. doing the matchup so strat? You know? It doesn't like does locks. No counterplay. Pokemon <laughs> so much so much of Pokemon is people enjoying Nuzlocke runs. And what is a Nuzlocke yeah. run if not forcing yourself to not play yeah. ultimately? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I play games like that all the time. I, I put like kind of a self limitation on something like I don't want to use that. I don't want to use this. I you know, I wanna just like do this part of the game. And uh, it's not optimal, but it's, you know, that's kind of the beauty of video games is that you have the freedom to play them how you want. They're designed for you to play a variety of different play styles, at least, you know, well-designed games, obviously. Mm. But they're they're not designed for you to just like, you know, you have to do this one thing. And, and if you don't, then the game's unbeatable. Yeah, um, well, you know, and I, th- I think a big part of it is our fault, too, like as content creators, right? Because, like, we... Not are we the baddies? Because people watch their favorite <laughs> content creators play the games a certain way and play them very successfully. Most multiplayer streamers, you know, live streamers, are at the highest or highest, around the highest rank possible. Like, I've had people talk about, like, you can't stream League of Legends any, high, any lower than Diamond or no one will care. Like it has to be diamond level or, or whatever. And I don't know the percentages, but I know that diamond is a very small percentage of the player base. Very like small, it's not yeah. Very common percentage of player base that are up in diamond. It's not something like 
a DVD rank where you just play enough, you'll get there. You have to legitimately be exceptional at the game to yes. get there. And so people who have full-time jobs, families, friends, activities that they do, they go to the dog park, they go to the farmer's fucking market on the weekends, like they do all these things, are rating themselves against dudes like Asmongold who like live in a trash can with rats and shit that play 80 hours a day. Like you can't compete with someone like that. Like yeah. if you're a normal person with car insurance. In a trash can. You, if you have That's car insurance and a fucking <laughs> partner and a romantic partner, you probably don't have as much time as he does to play World of Warcraft. You're not going to be no. at that level. And so I think that people set these like unreasonable expectations. Like all of us here collectively are in like the 0.1%, I would say, in terms of like how much time we spend playing video games relative to the national average in any of our home countries, right? Mm -hmm. Like we play a lot because it's our job to do that. So that's like what we do. We play for work and then we play for pleasure as well. Then your average person is spending 40 hours a week at work they're spending eight times seven hours a week asleep, roughly. They're spending all this time, right? I'm not doing the math, but they spend all this time and you only have so many hours in your day for video games at that point. And then you want to say, the only way that I can be valid is if I'm as good at this game or close to as good as this game at the guy that plays it full time for a job. And that's right. like, you wouldn't have a guy, mo and, this, and, and this is like a unique <laughs> thing, I think, to video games in a lot of ways, because like, you don't have a guy who's a fan of the NBA, right? who watches the National Basketball Association in the U.S., who goes to the YMCA to play with the boys, who's expecting to be LeBron fucking James of the YMCA, right? They're going to yeah. obviously realize, like, I play an hour a day, four days a week. Like, I'm not going to be an NBA pro. But I think that because of the accessibility of video games and the people that go from being a random person playing the game, there aren't people getting signed out of the YMCA to the NBA, but there are people being signed from playing pubs and Overwatch to professional Overwatch teams. And so I think the mm. like gaming yeah, turns into this whole thing where everybody's dream to be the best like causes you to be a little bit different in the way you approach playing casually or playing yeah. recreationally. Right? That's true. Like it's very democratized now with, you know, you get good at a game, you show it off on stream, the right person watches it. Hey, you could be on Cloud9. Like it yeah. just happened like that. That's happened. People yeah. have just been discovered streaming and people are like, wow, this guy's cracked. And then then they're in the esports scene. So, yeah, that's true. You're not going to be playing like a pickup game outside of a gym. And then the Dallas Mavericks are going to come calling like, hey, yeah. you want to try out, bud? Yeah, yeah you're really good in there. <laughs> yeah. You're really good in there. Todd, come on yeah, down and try The net was on fire, dude. I mean, that's, like a, fucking, check that's like a fucking 90s Disney movie plot, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, like, that's like the kid or something. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. like 13-year-old savant I, at basketball. Yeah, like, I, I suppose it depends a little bit on the game as well. Like I said, there are some games where I've been the person in Final Fantasy XIV where somebody's tried to apply to join our group and I've looked at their gear and I'm like, not good enough. They can't join. But the the margin for <laughs> error is, like, slimmer Weird than that. <laughs> I, I've been that person. I'm just like, no, you can't sit with us. You haven't done no. your homework. So, so, so the rage quitter right. hell divers. As the so devil's was, advocate, though, that's fair. Though that's fair. Like you have a you have a goal, right? And the, they're the game not is very help you reach that goal. Like, it's very not. like obvious where the line is of like you need this gear so that you can do this content, and if you don't have it, you can't really do it. And you're too poor to be with us. You're too yeah. poor. Yes, you can't sit with us. Well, it's like because the problem is then my time is wasted because I'm sitting here getting a fucking magical tree down to 2% health, and we don't have the DPS to kill the magical tree because you didn't put materia in your gear, did you? Because you couldn't be bothered. And then Get there's out. no DKP like points. The, yeah. I like this... Uh, <laughs> I like this Regina George side of Sinnoh yeah. that we're seeing right now. <laughs> this feckless samurai player yeah. hasn't put materia in his sword, so we can't kill the tree. Get out. Be gone from my sight. You sicken me. Get out of my face, bitch. <laughs> bitch. You can't bitch. sit with us. And this is um, why I didn't play Final Fantasy XIV, because I didn't want to see this side of Sinnoh at me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, why we, not? This is, we've heard the stories, but now we're seeing it live, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> A little tyrant in his era. Yeah. In this yeah. domain, so yeah, I, there is there's nuance. To this, I guess, it depends a little bit on the game as well, right? Well, like, I think that. Well, I think that though. I think that this has happened for a long time, but like, I think that it's like there's a shift because I used to play World of Warcraft. Like, I was obsessed. Like, I, I almost, I almost ruined every relationship I had in my life because of World of Warcraft. I was that obsessed with the game, like just an unhealthy obsession. And during the the Burning Crusade era DLC, right? 
I was on the top raid guild in my server and we were like racing other servers for server first and we were racing other guilds on the server. We were like super hardcore and we had the same thing. Mm. We had like class leads and like you had to apply and get like your fucking resume shredded apart. Like, right. The, all that stuff happened too. And it still happened. But I think that like back then that was the exception. They were like people that pushed themselves to be exceptional and almost ruined their real lives like me. Right. But they did that. And I think nowadays, like, that's bleeding into like every level of play. It's like the people that are still sweaty in bronze and silver in competitive games. Like they're still so mad and so stressed out. Like, I don't think that the guys yeah. that were raiding Karazhan and Burning Crusade twice a week with their boys, cracking a couple cold ones on the weekend, they weren't like yelling at each other for fucking up during boss fights. They were chewing glass. They were learning. They were having fun and progressing at their pace. Whereas mm. our guild was like, we were farming materials. We were, doing practice runs we were like we were doing it like we were doing it four nights five nights a week we were raiding every reset we were going hard right we were yelling at each other we were breaking friendships we were we were having issues right but like because we were die hard but you're smiling i because it was a beautiful time of my life i loved it right it was fun all right it was fun for me but i don't think it's fun for everyone but i think that everyone now is subjected to it because at every level they're doing it like there was open recruitment in guilds back then. There aren't guilds these days that are progressing in games that are open recruiting anymore. There's like literally gear score requirements at every level of the game. And I think that that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that we're, the, the gaming culture is shifting and never going back. The John, information wanna, age has ruined game. John, I want to go back and play Orcs Must Die 3 again and just us take it real seriously. <laughs> yeah, we should yell at each other. You fucking idiot! You put the trap you there. Put the spike trap there. What are you thinking? <laughs> Your west side defense was weak. That's not the time to experiment, Gary. <laughs> Stick to the plan. Yeah, uh, I like I say, I'm like you, Doug. Though, where I would I would love that if I had more time. Same. I loved all yeah. that hardcore. Give me your resume before you join the guild stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that. So he gets his glasses wrong. out. That's got like a little chain on. Let me take a little look at this. I, I, like, see. I, I, I think that my like summary of the whole situation is like that kind of mindset used to be the exception, and I think that's the casual mindset now. I think everybody is kind of like being pulled into that sort of a mindset in basically every game with any sort of competitive element now, including fucking PV, PVE games like Lethal Company. And Helldivers 2, and I don't know what, like, Dragon's Dogma is. I, I don't know if that's a competitive, I don't know if it's a multiplayer versus environment game, but, like, definitely with Helldivers 2 and Lethal Company are good examples, I think, of, like, we are human beings playing against an AI-controlled opponent, and people are trying to min-max to the point that they're like, I won't play with you if you're not playing perfect. In situations, yeah, it's not like... Among Us, Among Us. Total meme example. nonsense, where they come in mm. with nothing. It's like yeah. in many situations, like I said, it's just fine. It's not yeah. that razor right. thin. It's not so, that serious. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's where my nuance is. Is like there's a lot of ways that you can play just fine and it doesn't have to be the one thing that works. But yeah, I was yeah. I was tempted to net deck when I first started playing Magic Arena, which I did a little bit this week. <clears throat> I looked up some good vampire cards because I like making vampire tribal decks, but I didn't just completely copy one thing. Right, it's yeah, it's one thing to like look at decks for inspiration, and it's another just to be like, all right, that deck mine now, and here we go. It's just yeah, because like mentality. When, when I built Yu-Gi-Oh decks and stuff, I'd be like, what com what what combos are out there that people use? And then I would like, that sounds like a fun combo. I bet I could use that with this one in a stupid, weird way. Without judgment, though, John, can I ask why that's a bad thing? Well, because half the gameplay is building a deck. But what if I'm that's not, not the gameplay that you like? Like, that's not what you enjoy. Like, what if that's, like, you you literally maybe even oh, no, have, like, I mean, men mental limitations for that to actually be, like, possible for you? Like, it's just, like, you don't think in that kind of an abstract way. And so, like, coming up with a build concept on your own and then figuring out all the cards going, like, all of that is, like, that's, like, torture. And so, torture. Like, this is, this, <laughs> like, torture, this is, this yeah. is, I would step in and say... It, is Sino sponsored? So, 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 so sponsorship right now. I, God damn, what was, I made a, 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 a shush face to the screen as if to say, "Don't tell everyone that I'm just getting up because I was going to get a Coke Zero. But I should have known that the they minute I showed so. yeah, a sign of sorry. weakness, why did so. you yeah. show? We're not. Like, just showing all, like, look what I've we'll got. We'll pause. We'll um, pause the podcast to give you shit, bro. Don't don't think. Uh, that. Well, I got a Coke Zero. Sorry, I apologize. Um, but the, what I was going to say was, uh, you are playing with somebody else's deck. 
So your accomplishment, as we were saying earlier, about like you've lessened your own ex ability to enjoy the game by achieving with something you've created. So you're judging me the same way that someone. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying. Has a DLC they... pack to get fast travel and Dragon's. Oh, like, no, no. I like. Wait, did you can, I say I was can... judging that earlier? No, I think. I think that, no, because I, I, I asked you I wouldn't without judgment because I'm trying to because the way no, he said it was no, he said Doug, it you've taken this as judgment. Like you can you can spoil your fun however you want to. Like the same it's way people can buy thing. DLC. That's, that's what was, like that's fine. But like the same way someone can buy DLC, which is fine. People can do that. The same way someone can follow a guide on how to beat a boss or get through a raid or something or use the right gear in a game. You know, they're limiting their. Yeah, like you're just you're limiting your ability to be creative in that space. And if you don't have fun doing that creative side, that's fine. You can be a but, sheep dog. Yeah. You can be an uncreative, yeah. feckless you know, fucking you know slave to but the you're, meta. But you're, but you're, win, you're, you're just winning. You, yeah, you, you're winning you with someone really, else's I, build. Like you're, but you're, you're, you're just you you may as well just watch their YouTube video. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't agree either. Because there's like a lot more to it than just taking. It's not like an instant win. It's not like I press a button and I get to win the game. Like you still. That's have to fair. Play that's the fair. Game. That's you still fair. Have to learn the matchups. You still have to true. learn the counterplay. You have to learn all. You have so much. There's so much depth to it. Unfortunately, they've probably got YouTube videos where they explain. I'm sure they do, but I wouldn't watch one of those. That's not fun for me either. Like I wouldn't want to be told how to play it. I just want to like. I want to skip. Basically, just skip the part of it that my brain like doesn't really like. That's not how my mind works it's, and this mm. has been since i was in high school and i'm a million years old so this is like in the 90s oh, i was totally fine I, yeah yeah i used yeah. to have people my friends would help me build decks and magic and then i would play the deck and learn the deck and and like just kind of that was that was kind of what i did like i was just never attuned for something like that um yeah um, so for me it, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. it doesn't hamper my gameplay at all it doesn't change my experience at all it's just one of those things like i guess i could like force myself to build my own deck and then it would just be terrible and i'd have no fun and quit because i just get wrecked because my my deck wouldn't make any sense or have any synergy i guess it's right. not how my mind if not you're not good at theory crafting then you know it can be frustrating yeah. and sometimes it's more like somebody showing you a style that you can play in and then you're like oh i quite like that i'm gonna give that a yeah. shot hmm. but what gary is saying doug is that if you want to be a skinner box feckless rat pressing the lever for pellets then you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm completely completely no, I'm pro people like doing whatever they want to, but you yeah. know, I I think there is a degree where you are you are spoiling your own fun a little bit. How? I wouldn't agree with that. Yeah, how? I want to understand how you're. Because you're not. You're not. Because I I suspect. Because I, I feel like you're not even trying to a point. I think that's what a lot of people don't do. They don't try to find if they can enjoy building something. Like if you were testing things and you're like telling me at forty, and I literally just told you that when I was in high school, I tried building Magic the Gathering decks and went insane, and ended up asking my friends for help so that I could play the game with them. You're telling me I haven't tried hard enough, and that if I just try hard, I'll I'll get I'll next time I'll be putting out how to guides on how to build Magic the Gathering arena decks because I'll I'll I find mean, the joy that I've been missing my whole life. Have a moment. That's crazy. That's, That's I, a crazy thing you're saying, Gary. I I know I I don't think it is. It's crazy. Uh, I, I, th I think I think there is a joy to like building something like for you a deck. there is for you there. That's because you've got that creative thinking, perhaps Gary, mm -hmm. and That's you enjoy how your that. Works. Yeah, there is I'm no more like Doug, that. where I, I the thing is like for Magic Arena. First of all, I don't fucking know what packs have a lot of the vampire cards in them that I could use. So hmm. I had to look it up because I'm like, no, I have you these cheated coins. your joy. You cheated your joy. You should have no, just no, like, money. I should have randomly found <laughs> oh vampires God. from across right. the cosmos. Right. I think I think we're jumping a little bit between what I'm actually saying. Oh. Yeah, we're just like, you know, to the other extreme. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not saying you can't Google things because welcome to the modern age. Like who plays Stardew about Googling things? I don't um, started, so I don't have to worry about that. Oh my <laughs> I've seen God. you stream Stardew, dog, so... Yeah, but I had um, to. But, um... I, had to. I do get, I do um, get what you're saying, though, Gary, that so, sometimes the joy... My editor was showing me some of the stuff that he uses in Arena, and he uses these weird little decks where he's like, I have a couple of cards that are pigs, so these I made a pig deck. Decks. Hmm. No, yeah. they're, they're weird, because they had a oh, set yeah. in Magic that's like... It's all about, like, nursery rhymes and stuff. So he legitimately has a three little pigs deck. Oh, that's cute. And that's the, awesome, it's like man. first pig, cool. second pig, third I mean, pig. Yeah. But he was he was winning yeah. matches with it just fine, and he was like platinum, mm -hmm. so he was like not the top, but it was like good enough. And yeah, I was, like, fun, for him, I had fun building, that was like, the joy, right? He was yeah. like kind of creative. So yeah. I do I do get that, Gary. But I think just in Doug's point of view, making a really shitty deck because you don't have a lot of imagination for it, and then just getting frustrated with it just isn't fun. But like, if someone you, doesn't like winning, like for example, you don't like 
you don't like the gameplay of Bloodborne, but you like the serotonin of winning against a boss. So you follow a guide on exactly how to like duplicate the moves, and you don't like you you rob yourself of the learning of how to defeat a boss. I just feel like saying you rob yourself like, implies I'm, that they're doing it wrong, though, and that that comes into like, do I'm you not, think that people are robbing themselves of the experience that they play a game on easy instead of playing on the normal or hard difficulty? No, level? like you whoa, can you can do the whoa whoa whoa. That's like, like a whole like, other conversation. So yeah, um, I'm I'm just saying like. You're you're skipping part of what the gameplay is, which is fine. You can do that. Like people can buy microtransactions and skip getting the and the items and stuff. I'm just saying that that's. Yeah. I'm not judging you for. It. I'm just saying that's what you're doing, which is fine. If you don't enjoy doing that bit, you can skip it. If you don't want to grind to get the points to teleport around in Dragon Dogma Two, you can just buy it. Like it's not a problem. Oh, so when Gary brings up Dragon's Dogma 2, it's fine, but when I bring oh, it up, it's, wow. we've no, moved no, no, no. on already, so no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting on the tree. Time-stabbing <laughs> this, this season is going to be a nightmare, John. <laughs> I get razzed for it, but when Gary deftly yeah. weaves it into conversation... You know, <laughs> yeah, as 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 uh, since we're on the topic of segues, do we want to go back to talking about Pokemon Unite? <laughs> we didn't talk about it enough. Yeah, because we, we kind of we kind of talked about it a little bit, and then we oh yeah, no, we, we'll kinda... go back. But like, yeah. Yeah. does that make sense, Doug? What I'm saying, I, I think that on a certain level it does. I just I feel like I just can't get past like feeling like you're being judgmental when you say that. I'm you not. Have to... No, no, no. You say you're robbing yourself of joy, but there's no joy to be had. It's like hmm. it's like, I, and I'm I'm trying to think of a of an analogy, but like it's like you're not. I, I don't feel like I'm the joy for me. It's like the joy from some people get their joy out of speed running Doom Eternal. Some hmm. people get their joy out of playing a nightmare mode, Ultra Nightmare, where if you die, it's over on Doom Eternal. And some people get their joy out of playing it on easy. They're all equally valid. Rob, not, robbing is probably just bad joy. phrasing by me because I I can't understand not necessarily enjoying the creative element of that game. Right. So like, so to me, I'm like, you, you're completely like missing out on something that I love about it. Right. Um, so it's, it's probably just bad phrasing on my part because I can't Perhaps. imagine not enjoying that element because right. that's see, the way my brain's programmed. Yeah. And so on the flip side, I can't imagine enjoying that. Like, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's like p people. You're, you're probably, you probably look at people. me like, you're just inflicting misery on yourself. Well, no, I don't because I guess maybe with my POV, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, that's Gary. That That's so Gary. Like I can look mm. at something and be like, this is a Gary game or this is a Sinnoh game or like, you know. This is a, this is because that's the way that your guys' brain works. And like mine, I'm like one chromosome evolved past a caveman. So like I really enjoy certain things that are like more simple and fun for me. And like I can see the validity of the guys who are like, oh, my God, I found this crazy combo when you use this card and this card in conjunction that can get like a, a turn seven win. And to me, it's like, cool, how do I do that? So I can do it, too. Like I don't care about hmm. figuring it out. I get no joy out of figuring it out. Hmm. Um, I just want to do it. Okay, so fellas, I feel like we've kind of talked about this for a while now. Okay. So I want to talk about in Pokemon Unite, one Pokemon that you like playing, and one Pokemon that you hate playing against or playing okay. with even. Okay. Mm. Do you have Do you have any that come to mind? So I'll I'll start. I actually really like playing as Mister Mime in Pokemon Unite because when you put up the barrier and then you clap them into it and you see the stupid little fucking bird why am i so aggressive when i talk about boba games i don't know why this comes out of me hmm. when you clap a little torchic or whatever into the wall they get stunned they're like oh uh, i didn't <laughs> think that you would actually attack me back i'm like yeah that's right you were aggressive and now you're in a psychic prison that's yeah. what you deserve so <laughs> i love playing as mr Mime and just clapping people into walls and stunning them and getting kills nice. uh and i hate uh -huh. playing against I hate but Mewtwo. Thank you. Mewtwo's very annoying. <laughs> oh, I didn't get to play against God. Mewtwo, I don't think. Well, it you're just, it just locks onto you. Hmm. It just it just blows you up with this lock on move from like fifty miles away, and I'm like, okay, well, struggling to have counterplay to that. Glad somebody but, had something to say because that's the brain rock character in Unite, right? Is Mewtwo? You just point and click, and then they lose, and then they're like, I'm so good at the game. Oh, I'm I'm so I play awesome. Mewtwo. I think for for me, I enjoyed playing Gyarados a lot, which I was hoping I would because I like Gyarados. Mm -hmm. um, he just he's got a cool little dash move, and I like really mobile characters like that. But he also got like a ranged attack, and I don't know, just like my style. I like their I like the ults where you get to go underwater and then come up and do the stun. That was awesome. 
Um, and then one character I hated playing against was Leafeon. It, feel, it felt like every single Leafeon that we played would just come out of the jungle and instantly delete us and get mm-hmm. fed, and I just got so sick of it. I can't even tell you what they did half the time. It's like Leafeon would appear on my screen, I would say like, there's a leafy on, like in slow motion. And by the time I was done saying that, I'd be dead. That'd be it. Razor Leafy leaf or whatever this, the like, fuck. It's got this like light beam move that comes out of its head and like slams down in a is line it, in front is it of it. Solar, is it solar beam? Maybe. Is it solar it's, beam? It's like, so okay. fast. So yeah. you don't really have any time to dodge it. Like by the time it's pressed that move, if you were there, you've been hit. Yeah. And it's like really long projectile in front of it or whatever. Yeah, you're right. Leafeon is a nightmare. Leafeon is a yep. little piece Agreed. of shit. You guys have both done great worst Pokemon takes. <laughs> like, those are two two that came immediately to mind when they were like, "Who do you hate playing against?" I've I've those got I've got another list. one, but uh, I want to see if you guys m- will mention it. Okay. Yeah, I got to go. Gonna... Still, unless Gary steals it. Yeah, go Gary. Uh, no, no, you know you go. No, 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 it was my it was my book club pick. So I want to hear yours first. Okay. Um, uh, I love Cramorant. Yeah, he does. that weird little bird. Yeah, he does. Like I tried. I, like the bird. I tried. I tried Azumarill because it's like one of my favorite Pokemon, and Azumarill's cool. But Cramorant will always be my boy. Oh, oh it just spits fish at everybody, and they're all dead so quickly. You could just, you could just like hit Alton and be like, "Yeah, oh, not, <laughs> not anymore." There's so many like damage dealers these days, yeah, but yeah. like it feels really satisfying to like shut down an entire zone and just spit a Pikachu at someone and see them die. Just yeah. to explain to anybody that's not played Pokemon Unite, you know, Cramorant's ultimate move is it stands still. And it repeatedly regurgitates fish at people for lots of damage. It just yeah. goes bleh, 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 bleh. And it's like, it, is it auto lock on? Yes, it auto locks. You just keep clicking attack. Anything near you just gets fish vomited at it. Yeah, the closest thing. The closest thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I've got a little chef hat on mine now. It looks adorable and so stupid at the same time. Um, and if I was going to go for a Pokemon that I hate, there's a couple. There's two that come to mind, but I'll go for the one that I think. Uh, I'll go with this one just because I hate it more because visually. It's like a bug-looking Digimon. Buzzwall? Oh, it's Buzzwall? Like, it's, oh, yeah, Buzzwall? That, yeah, that really thing. Oh, yeah. I He's just, really annoying, yeah. He I sucks. fucking hate it. And I hate the way it looks. Every time I'm killed yeah. by him, I'm like, you're not even yeah. a Pokemon. Man, what, what are you? Fucking piece of shit. Yeah, he's got another brain. He's got that brain rot ability too, where you just click on a dude with like a basic ability and just like suck all their life out and they die for no reason. Yeah, like every cool. time one of those gets into a fight with me, like I, I know that I hate it because every time like dies in front of me, I'm like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> and he says it out loud. By the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can definitely see that. No. <laughs> I was trying to play against one the other day, and it's like it does the slam move that stuns you. Yep. But he did it like every time he activated it, it was like he could activate it three times. So it's, it must be one of those abilities where it's like when you press it, you have a window where you can do it two more times, and then it goes on cooldown. It does feel like it's like, like smacking you about, like... He did it to me once, and then he did it to me twice, and I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, okay, I'm, I've lost a lot of health here, but we're still in the fight. And he did it to me a third time, and I was like, that's three individual short stuns of me. I can't get close yeah. to this thing. And he's just, like, mm. slamming me into the ground and, like, paralyzing me, so... Yeah, he's annoying. And it's not yeah. a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get what you mean about it being, like, a Digimon, because that's what it looks like. Yeah. 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 Doesn't it fit thematically? I feel the same way about it. Hoopa, one of the Pokemon that they've wow. added. People don't Dude. play that a lot because it's kind of complex. I think I've not but... seen one. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, so yeah. play Hoopa. So okay. no one's it. Hoopa. It's like H- H- Hoopa. The H- the H- yeah. Oh, okay. Bro, I've people not seen will... anyone play it or Cramorant. No one plays Cramorant. They do play Cramorant some in ranked, but in very. Okay. I'd, I'd say like kind of on the lower end, but I see a lot of Cramorants. Oh. I see a lot of few Hoopas. The number one Hoopa players. Like the number one type you'll get is the ones that fucking grief you. They'll put the teleport back in your base, and then while you're in a team fight, they'll drop a teleport in front of you, so you teleport back to your base. Like they literally, it's like kids that get on with Hoopa just to troll their teammates. Like I've had that, I've had that scenario play out in ranked like three or four times. Oh my god, that's crazy. Hoopa players that are actively just trolling their teammates, like just to sandbag for the fun of it. Just to, it's like Symmetra and Overwatch all over again. Yeah. I'll take yeah. this teleporter. Oh, I've fallen off a cliff. Yeah, teleport that's off hilarious. into the ravine. Yeah, so. Hoopas are like, oh god, Hoopa players are the worst. I've I've had like genuinely had like a two to one ratio of sandbagging Hoopas to people that are actually playing Pokemon Unite. That's Hoopa. So, yeah. All right. So my favorite <clears throat> is I am like a Trevin in main, Trevin in top lane. Oh, I love Trevin, which I love him with my whole heart. But what was awesome about playing with the lads was that 
they just buffed Charmander's auto attack. And I had Sinnoh, who was like super down to play tank top lane, and Gary, who was just holding literally any lane. Gary was jungling his Kramer at that one point, and we were winning. So oh, he good. plays he plays in any lane, so it's great. So I was able to just play Charmander or Charizard and sit bot lane and just have like a blast doing damage. So a fire like, blast, a fire oh. blast. Ah. So yeah, I I would say like Trevenant is my main and my and my favorite overall. But Charmander or Charizard was really fun to play like with you guys and one that I would like to play a lot more. My least favorite to go against since you guys have listed a lot of the worst ones to go against. I'd say Mimikyu probably. Mm. Mimikyu is very 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 much like click to win. Like no really no skill ceiling. You just use abilities that lock them down and deal a bunch of damage and they die. Very annoying to play against. Very brainless gameplay. I didn't play. like. 100% we didn't see a lot of them. Mimikyu was doing. Yeah, I, I, mm. I played against Mimikyu with y'all, but I can't remember what they did. It can like grab you a little bit, right? And hold you yeah, in like, place. Yeah, like because he has this lockdown where like it eats it's you. It's a bit like can, a noob rack. It can, it can eat your ult too. So if you start doing your ult, he can grab you and like lock you down. And then you uh, get like damage happened. over time. Plus you don't get to use your ult. That happened to me, and I was wondering what happened. Okay. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a bit like a Nubarak in Heroes of the Storm who could like put you in a cocoon. cocoon yeah. And Except that, that counts mm -hmm. your ults and stuff. Yep, but the but Mimikyu's does damage over time, and you can be attacked by teammates while he's doing. So. Oh. It's just like you're dead. Oh, that's bye -bye. day. And you know yes. anything anything that takes a player's agency away is like really frustrating to play against. Mm. Like you just feel oh, like yeah. I couldn't have done anything differently, and so. Yeah. Agency talk. I know. I watched your YouTube video, Gary, one and a half <laughs> times. So I'm saying big boy words now. Um, um, yeah, and I will say that everybody listed their favorites, and every single one of you guys during a match while we were playing together carried a game with the character you mentioned. Because John was carrying games with Gyarados, Lloyd carried games with Mr. Mime, and Gary carried games with Kramer. So let's go. Well done. Well done, men. Can I honorary mention another one I hate? Yes. yes. I'm going to do that too. Another it's another Digimon looking thing. It's like okay. a dragon, like a lightning dragon that could spit like a beam forever and move up and down with it. Oh, so that's you know my bastard. Oh, yeah, it's all the new that? character, the new one. Um, what, what's it called? Because it's not Pokemon. Mirrodon, 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 Mirrodon. Mirrodon Mon. Yeah. That thing. Uh, yeah. Mirrodon Mon. <laughs> Mirrodon, yeah. yeah. Mirrodon Mon. Uh, Miraidon. Yeah, Miraidon Mon. Miraidon. Miraidon. Yeah, that, that thing. I didn't, I didn't like that thing either. I it's not like that. It's, it's beam just face. lasts forever. I know you were shouting about it as well. Cinema hey, win, bro. I, th I think it's too, the beam is too long. He's too fast when he uses it and it does too much damage. And he can also make this like lightning puddle follow you as well. I think it needs to be nerfed a little bit because it's like, I don't, a character like that shouldn't be untouchable from such a far distance away with such a long projectile and still do tons of damage all at once. Like yeah, that ability the, the is a little effect. bit too... Yeah, it's a little bit too easy for them to just completely zone you by themselves. They should re have to rely a little bit on having like a front line and be able to do it to you like a little bit, but it was just too easy for them to kite all yeah. of us. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, I, like when we were when we were 2v1ing it, it was like, this is a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. John, but it's a legendary. Mention? New Pokemon legendary. I, I hate legendaries. I hate them. My honorable mention is Blastoise. You playing hate against it? Blastoise, yeah, I hate playing against Blastoise. He's so oppressive, dude. He's he really so, yeah. is. I made, I made him for a All his little month. stuns and knockbacks and shit, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. yeah, he was a nightmare to play against. I will, I will tell you that that his his like water wave into um, the water cannon, like, there's a skill cap to that. There's like a skill ceiling that you have to like. It's a combo that's not easy to hit because I I made him for like a month, and so yeah, I played him when he first came out. I think Blastoise is one of those characters where like. If they're good, they are so oppressive and so frustrating. If they're bad, they just throw a game. So, yeah, yeah I think I think you just probably got unlucky with having to go against ones that are good. We were also, playing ranks. I was so. having flashbacks to when he first released, and he was everywhere, and he was like yeah. dunking on everyone too. Because I, I played Blastoise quite a bit when he first came out, and I was like, this character is like easy mode, holy shit! And then coming back to it and being like, he's still like that. But I guess yeah, I didn't One see point. a single Snorlax. I no, it's just a lot, he's, I guess. There's yeah. a lot of Pokemon. Snorlax used to be it, though, right, Gary? Snorlax yeah. used to be it. Like, just, 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 like, just, like, yeah. like, like, Snorlax I used was to like, play him quite got, a bit. He was he got, fun. Yeah, he got nerfed like over the over the years or whatever. He got like tuned down, but he used to be like S plus to your top. Him and yeah. him and uh, Slowbro were like the two. Oh yes, yeah, Slowbro. Saw him rank. Yeah. and Slowbro remains we, yeah. really strong, but he has no utility, so he's just like a damage guy top. 
I remember um, us doing, I can't remember if it was with Gary or Sino, but we did Snorlax Slowbro top in the early days. That'd be been Sino. That'd be been Sino. Yeah, and it was like really, it. really tanky, uh, tanky lane. We had a lot, a lot of, of fun with that. Too. I loved Sol- Slowbro, yeah, and you were playing yeah. Snorlax. I, yeah. One thing actually, when you were talking about Blastoise that I wanted to bring up that I like about Pokemon Unite is yes a lot of the build stuff is like the gacha where you have to just make your number go up but one thing that i actually quite like is in lieu of having items apart from all the gacha stuff you do in the background when you're actually in a match you basically just pick what moves you want to use for that match yeah rather than what items you buy and i actually really like how sometimes the way that you play one pokemon can be very different because you're like i'm going to do blastoise but not the the surf make them fly back blastoise my favorite blastoise is the one where you you do like a water spout so it like rains on them so they get slow and then you start spinning and you have mm-hmm. water coming out of you as you spin on them and it's like you become like the enemy can't disable you and you do like continual damage and you're kind of like tanky and that's very different from the other style of blastoise where it's like you're pushing them back with waves and i thought that was quite neat that every pokemon usually has like two ways to play it and sometimes you can change it up so you might have like a way that you prefer you always do or sometimes maybe depending on who you're playing against you might prefer one over the other. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, that was one of the benefits of Heroes of the Storm as well, because you, you could change where you put your levels, basically. You would, there was like key... What, what level was it? Three, five... Seven, oh no, ten. Seven, ten, and then like 13, and Four, 15, seven, whatever. ten, fifteen, and twenty, I think, were the, level, yeah. were the talent levels. Where like things would just dramatically change. And like the ult was always the big one, because you'd be like, you could choose yeah. between two, and it would be like... Sometimes you would just choose the... Well, it's traditionally a worse ult because it completely helps yeah. you against the team you're against. Mm-hmm. And it that, means game, that, you know... that game was like immaculately balanced too. It felt like you just couldn't take it. You couldn't take a fight if you were a, if you're a talent down. Like there's just I feel like there was never a time where it was okay to take a talent down fight. But then like if you were on yeah. the same level, then it just became like then it came yeah. became about execution. And then if you had a lead, then all of a sudden they couldn't take a fight because you had a lead talent wise. Like that was I missed that. That was really it was a great game. It was a fantastic game. It's coming uh, back, man. It's coming back. <laughs> it's coming back. They're it's coming back. Podcast. Microsoft's gonna see. They're gonna see the value, and they're gonna bring it. Yeah, back. they're gonna. They're gonna come back. Oh, I had such a sad moment when I was looking through the pinned comments between Gary and I on Discord, and one of the pinned comments was I had found what apparently was like leaks of new oh, content no. for Resident Evil Resistance, and I had like linked some of the document to Gary. It was like 2020. I was like, oh man, that was I, a wow. dark time for me. The copium oh. of like they're gonna add more. See the files they're change. Do it. Yeah, they might. Do it. it might come back. It might. You never know. You never know. Yeah, the VHS effect. It won't come back ever. Yeah, it can't come back. It's VHS. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's just too bad that the devs ruined the game by making Killer too weak, right? In resistance. Yeah, oh, that no. was the issue. That was the problem. Was that Killer was too weak. Was too weak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, Pokemon Unite. Once you it's a w, get past yeah? the gacha stuff, oh, definitely. it was an excellent choice. Like, I still yes, want to play yes. more. I enjoyed playing yeah. it. I want to play more. Like I said, I wanted to play some solo uh, before we got back together and talked about it, so I would have some extra perspective. But I just didn't get a chance to. But I wanted to, and and I might still do that actually. Yeah, yeah I might, like, I'm down to play more because I just I enjoyed it. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah, and it was like fun. just all, like all of, like just swearing. So yeah, much. just yelling, <laughs> so yelling violent, at, yelling at potential millennials or potential children See, that you just don't know, but you're still yeah. yelling at them anyways. You yeah. fucking idiot! Yeah, what Gary, did you think was gonna to, happen? We need to play together so that we can raid top lane together, like the yes. old days. Yes, yeah, like the good yeah. old days. We're gonna go raid oh, that so lane. I had a game with Gary where Gary basically put a curse on the Sylveon for their their on their forefathers, their current generation, future generations to come. He was like. So I was trying to lane with Gary where we start the game in the same area, but the stupid yeah. Sylveon was like, no, I'm down. I'm down here with Cameron. Oh, I was like, okay. Oh, I hate it when uh, they do that. Yeah. So I was like, I okay, it. I can't play with Gary, but I'll join up with him later in the match. And then the Sylveon just proceeded to be complete ass and it made your life <laughs> miserable, right, Gary? They wouldn't dedicate to a fight. They kept like wandering off. They just, they kept watching from a distance. They, and, but the thing is, they would come into a fight and then they would leave. And they would lure misery to. I was so frustrating. They were so bad. I, I, I will. And say they spent the... the entire time bot just putting points in whilst we were all in the top lane trying to save the game, trying Dude. to win a fight so that we could turn it around. They just 
kept getting I've points at the bottom. I've scored seven points. Boop, boop. I've put an end <laughs> into the goal. Woo. And we're all like, come on, it's a 4v5. There's like gunfire at top. Yeah. There's like bleeding yeah. Pikachus get everywhere. Down. Get down. <laughs> get down. My dog's coming. Get down. Just spit them out the get yeah. down. And Mommy. Sylveon's like, 17 points. Boop, yeah, boop. yeah. I've just scored it. <laughs> Fucking idiot. I, the the randoms in Pokemon Unite are are worse than the randoms in I think any other video game I've ever played. Like it's amazing to me that like I can play so many matches of League, you know, unranked with just like randos. People ranked like Iron Four, and there will never ever be a moment where somebody goes to the wrong lane or <sighs> somebody was just like, let's have two people top. Nobody does that. Yes. Yeah. Nobody ever does that. Or, or like a jungler. It's like, I think I'll hang out mid the entire game. But that happens constantly in Pokemon Unite. Just like, why don't we have the jungler in the bottom lane? 3v2. And then they'll be under leveled for when there's team fights. That happens all the time. Where people will be like, I'm going top. And then they don't go top. They go no. bot. And they fuck in everything up. In the defense of the Pokemon Unite players, they are somewhat on mobile apparently. And probably children. No. Some of them. They're adult some of them Pokemon are gonna be, fans. Some of them are going to be, yeah, but some of them are going to be children on no. their mobile phone. You know? Adult Pokemon well, fans can like barely function in the world, so it makes I sense. I don't trends. care how old you are, bro. If you're going to snake fucking blue buff out of jungle at Snorlax, get the fuck out of Pokemon, dude. All right? Just learn <laughs> your lane assignments, bro. Learn your place. Children, children need to learn that some behavior I, is inappropriate. No, True. I... I, I honestly think that children would be better at the game. I was about to correct yeah. myself and be like, hang on, the thing you fear the most in Fortnite is the children. Yes. Because they grow yeah, up yeah. on it. Children they, are sweaty. They got nothing the else reaction, to do. The reaction yeah. times are so fast and they have no yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. So yeah. honestly, it's the adults. It, that's what I'm saying. It's the adult Pokemon fans. They're fucking everything up. Not us, though. No, 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 we're, no, we're better. We're different. No, no, no. We're different. We're, we're not we're adult not, yeah. Pokemon well, fans. It's not we're that. not like, we're not like I, I other millennial Pokemon no, fans. No, 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 no. Like we're I different. came back to the game after like a year and a half, and like, what was it my third game? I was like, okay, I remember now. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it, it took me a few matches too. Yeah. Sorry to be boring about it, but I, I think the reason why it works so much better <laughs> in League compared to Pokemon Unite is the game design. Sorry to be boring about it, but don't be boring. Think, well, game design's not boring. <laughs> no, it's not it, well, boring. it's like well, with with League, it's like you queue for a position. I am queuing yeah, to right. be the top That's later. That's true. Roll queue, and it didn't yeah. used to be like that. You used to have to type in like I want to go support at the beginning, right. so that you could yeah. get what you wanted. And Pokemon Unite is like that still, where it's just well, five people, and then somebody's like, it's "I'm like, Gengar." It's it's like Hell's Kitchen when Gordon's like pick an ingredient, they have to quickly grab one off the plate. Yeah, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> well, you know, so, Unite. Yeah. Unite might have evolved to that point too, because they just uh, recently added draft to Masters. Like so, a yeah. Masters See, level and above. Now that's what we draft. need. And so I, I'm assuming that they're going to run that for a season and then probably put that throughout the rest of the ranks. They're just so, going to start. Is, is Master is Master right after Veteran? Like, no, we after... have Ultra after Veteran and then. Masters. Oh, so fuck, we're like okay. we're like one. We're like diamond away. We're all platinum right now, like oh, platinum damn. equivalent in, in yeah. Unite, and then. We're pretty close to hitting masters, and then from our sorry, ultra and from ultra to masters. So. It is less catastrophic if there's a little bit of lane confusion at the beginning, like oh nobody's clearing the jungle. Oh Gary's like I'll go do it. It's usually not quite yeah. as catastrophic. Like if you do that in league, you're completely screwed. Yeah. Like it, the whole game goes off kilter, and you can tell it's designed like that. But it's a little bit easier in Pokemon Unite to be like oh I'll just do it, and then you can yeah like you know you know there's a good amount of like you can catch up. It's like, again. I'm going to correct Heroes of Storm again. Heroes had that, where like it had the ability to catch up. Yeah. I think mean, you know it has that quite well as well. Because you can just be like, okay, we're going to lose that lane, but I'm going to go kill these AI and yeah. level up, and then we'll win the next fight, and then we'll push back. Like, And it was definitely All within more, 10 minutes. Yeah, more, mm. push, more punishing in Heroes to be behind than Pokemon. I think that Heroes is like a really good midway point between Pokemon Unite and then like League and Dota. Or maybe maybe League and then Dota's like up here even in terms of like mm -hmm. complexity yeah. and, and you guys know my opinion about Dota two players. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like adult Pokemon fans, but yeah, you, you respect you respect them as the highest form of adult. <laughs> the, the the highest of all <laughs> the beings. highest yeah. Yeah. highest form of adult. Oh, highest form, highest yeah. form of adult yeah any any Dota two players listening to this as well will probably Fuck you. chuckle because they well, oh my god. <laughs> I was I was gonna build up to that, but. <laughs> uh, see, I see my Dota two main. 
I have no idea what I'm looking at. I don't know. I don't Discount know stitches. At. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a character Pudge? in Dota Two. His name is Pudge. Yeah. He's yeah, like that's the, Pudge. He's like the hook character in Dota Two. I played the mm. game for. I mean, I probably have like eight hours max. So Anybody Doug, I think the, Sido and Doug may have just three fallen hours. down a branch. Three hours. Yeah. Yeah. I recognize oh no, I, no, I tried no. it. I like. I'm not just talking smack here. Well, I am. No, but no. I gave it a shot. <laughs> But I was just no. like, I just prefer League. But any yeah. Dota 2 player hearing this is going to be like, of course you'd say that because you're a League player. And yeah, fair. But it's I just... don't think they're watching this. I think they're busy playing 24 hours a day, seven they're days a week. Probably on the 80th minute of their first round of the day. Yeah, yeah. They, they all their farm. third batch no. of pizza rolls just finished. Yeah, I did. I mean, I, again, we talked about, like, what is it? Um, robbing myself of joy, right? <laughs> there was no joy for me in Dota 2. I robbing your no, life of joy when you play that game i found no joy that is not a, that is not a doug game See, that is a that is a college level 300 level college course to of the tutorial of that game it was very very complicated and very yeah. i feel like you know how you know people that don't play league of legends will talk about it like it's the most toxic cesspool ever and it's like mm. I feel like the way that most people perceive League is how Dota 2 actually is. Does that make sense? I can see it. Because like I, 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 I honestly barely League played Dota 2. Like League is League is like I don't know. It, it's 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 really not that bad. Like it's like any other multiplayer game. I would say Overwatch is more toxic. I think I think League gets this particularly terrible reputation because I think the word like the phrasing of like toxic communities and toxicity in games comes from league because it was the first game to really like pick up that reputation yeah, and like articles written about it. so i think now it's stuck yeah. with it because that's where it comes from but yeah like there's there's way more toxic games than league i, I think you're right yeah. on overwatch overwatch is full of assholes. Overwatch is oh fucking, yeah you can't even you can't even, awful, you, you can't even join voice chat in overwatch unless no. you just yeah. want to like be refreshed on what slurs exist then right it's the, only, it's the only way you what's can the new hip happening yeah. slurs yeah what slurs exist let me get into overwatch right. voice chat remind myself i was i was told that i should get a certain disease and die more than once in dota 2 and i didn't even play it for that long and i was told to unalive myself and i'm saying that in case john has a problem with the youtube uh multiple times as well in, yeah in three hours of dota 2 literally playing against nothing but bots i was told to unalive myself I against never played bots? against That's bots. Crazy. I Who never cares? played against human beings. I was just going in bot games to try and learn the game. And That's people crazy. were so mad that I didn't know what I was doing. It goes it's back insane. to what we were talking about earlier. They act like the margin of victory is like razor thin. You're playing yeah, against yeah, yeah. bots, bro. Like they how how good could they possibly be? Yeah. Yeah, like why why are they getting angry? It's got, again, it's probably because they've watched a guy they're playing to beat Dota the bots. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just societal, man. It's just the day's people. not going well. They just their their lack of purpose and their inner insecurities and their all that. So just like it just gets regurgitated onto the game they're playing, and then they just like project that all onto some random person who's like, "Oh, this game seems interesting. I'd like to learn it." Mm. Too Fuck bad. you. <laughs> Inquisitive thirty-eight-year-old, fuck you! Uninstall. Get out of here! Yeah, uninstall IRL. Get out of here! <laughs> yeah. so, Jesus, man. Yeah, I just thought the character looked cool, and I wanted to play him. Uh, that's that's, that's why I imagine. Man. That's why I imagine the Pokemon Unite players are saying when they're surrendering at one minute into the game. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're saying the, all this stuff because there's no text chat. The early surrender is insane in that game. Yeah, I'm very my yeah the way I'm in like these MOBAs sometimes it's like sometimes I'm like the kind of angry barking dog and then if I see the person chat be like oh I'm sorry I just I didn't play very well this game I'm immediately like oh oh that's yeah okay as long as yeah, you're you chill about it yeah but exactly uh, there's a lot of Dunning-Kruger isn't there where it's usually the people who are playing badly are also the ones that got a lot to say about it and yeah. a lot to say about everyone well, else I mean I think one of my favorite things about heroes John particularly when me and you would play is how much we would sass people in that game when they yeah. would speak they'd die and then they'd start talking we'd be like oh that's funny <laughs> but the reason the reason it's a 4v5 now is because you died first you went in and died right dead, yeah. the dead can't speak yeah, yeah. yeah. there's not to say a yeah. friend of ours actually some so the moderation of these games could be better and i think we've all chatted about mm. that before i'm pretty sure a friend mm. of ours said that you know the character bard in league yes if you're out there who's like a little space guy that plays a little like space trumpet or whatever. A friend mm -hmm. of ours said that that bard skin got me bricked up and he got chat restricted. Wow. 
And I was like, like for all the people that tell you to unalive yourselves, get disease, yeah. death to your mother and all that, saying I think that bard skin is sexy was the thing that Ryan oh, is that was what like, no, up no. means. Yeah. Bricked up basically means to have an erection. Oh, okay. I'm surprised you don't know that, Gary. Yeah, I would have figured out. You, you made an edging joke a few episodes ago. <laughs> but you don't know what I'm, bricked I'm up. I'm really is. innocent weird. about some things. And then... weird, that, weird that John remembers that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not kidding. John was like, that's like the proudest moment of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But you don't know bricked up. I will say League and I will I will say League and stuff though, when you do report someone, it does tend to get sorted out. It is weird that bricked up got like slapped yeah, down. But at the same so time, maybe it's where got... it's like, thanks for your report, we took action. Love that. More games yeah. should have that. It, yeah. it feels very good. Yeah. yeah you know, I we agree. talk we talk about DVD here sometimes. You guys want to talk about have you guys seen that? I don't know how closely you guys follow oh the DVD community God, drama anymore, that, but speaking that, of that, the that report tweet. had action, mm. right? Yeah. Did you guys saw that? Yeah, yeah, the, the did, TTV yeah. that posted the, the Sorry, yeah. sorry so go for ahead, the Dex. for the uninundated, for the uninundated, uninundated, uninformed, uninformed, uninformed. Yeah. for the uninformed, for the feckless, for, the, <laughs> for guys for the who form. don't, for guys who don't know good. Uh, this dude, he's a Twitch Twitch streamer. He <laughs> he posted a tweet on Twitter of uh we we took action on your report message. Basically, he had reported somebody in DVD because the person was playing Michael Myers with a tombstone. He was going for the evil incarnate achievement where you have to tombstone four people in the same match. Right. He had tombstone the three kill. prior. Yeah, you instant kill with the tombstone if you don't know, if you're not yeah. a DVD player. So he had, he had tombstone killed the first three players and he needed one more for the achievement. And the TTV got into a locker so that he wasn't able, because you can't pull them out of the locker and tombstone them. They have to be initiated from like a neutral point right on the yeah. map standing position standing position so the ttv is in the locker the michael myers is waiting outside the locker they were in a standoff and the ttv survivor from the locker reported the the myers for holding him hostage yeah and and then apparently so he tweeted saying the feedback report saying action was taken on the player and he tweeted saying like, thank you so much behavior for understanding and banning this guy for being an asshole and holding me hostage. And DBD replied to the tweet and said, oh, that guy didn't get banned. He did nothing illegal. This was for something else. This was a, from a different report. Yeah. Because yeah. because that is not a hostage situation. You could have left the locker and gotten out yeah. of the game. And you then held this, the game hostage, dude. Yeah. yeah. This guy then goes the same to, people. He went yeah. to war on Twitter, basically saying like, I didn't want to give him the more. And then it's like, he like literally could not comprehend that he was just as, just as culpable in the situation as the Myers. Like they were both equally culpable in the yeah. match being held hostage. Like there was no hostage because the Myers could have hooked him. He could have come out. Neither one of them wanted to do that. Therefore, you know, two yeah. dumbs make a yeah. dumb, I guess, you know? Yeah. Between a rock and a hard I'm, place. I'm on the Myers side though, because they're trying to get that stupid they're achievement. Trying to get so they that stupid achievement. Ruining yeah. matches. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm just not, don't get the achievement. I'm not on either side. I'm not on the side of anybody that disrespects their free time like that. Like I would just go next if I was. Yeah, like I if think I was the I, Myers. I'd have just hooked him and been like, all right, fine. I'm not getting into this. If, game, if, try again. if I'm playing against Myers, I'm not going to give him the Maurice unless, like, if I'm if I'm sat in a locker and it's like they're not getting me out, I don't care enough. Like when someone slugs for a 4K, I'm like, oh, just kill me then. Yeah. Like, I, I don't care. In both situations, I would have chosen the route of, let's go to the next game. Like, there's no mm. scenario where denying the achievement or getting the achievement to me is worth waiting an hour for the lobby to close. Yeah. yeah. I would have just got out of the locker if I was a survivor, and I would have just done the hook if I was the killer. Like, but the whole point I got Spe was Especially if I was, I was streaming, I'd be like, this is shit content. <laughs> I wish they were a little bit more specific over what action was taken when they give you those feedback reports only because then you can avoid confusion with people thinking that like this guy thought that he got that guy banned for it. Yeah. And then behavior clapped him a little on socials, which I thought was very It was funny. I will say, good job behavior. Yeah. yeah. Good, like, good on them. Yeah, for yeah. smacking it down. It's a W, yeah. Um, do you guys want to talk real quick about the Blood Moon event? Because I did play a bit of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh I don't have a great impression, but I've wanted to see what y'all thought about it. I've this played a, new... a lot, but I, I know they've changed it. Like the, I think you can get more blood points from it now. But I played it as well, John, and I think I played DVD for three hours. Where I was like, I'm gonna do something else. Yeah, I, I played it for maybe about four hours or so. Um, so now, have you played it at all? I'm really sorry. I've not 
got no, ranted. Don't, okay. don't, oh, don't oh, apologise. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. <laughs> this is not, this is not <laughs> an evening podcast sorry. anymore. Oh, we're yeah, yeah, we're sorry. Well, that was very, very no. supportive reaction. I'll be the uninitiated one. You can That's explain to me then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. So um, basically the way that the event works, and they did this instead of their typical lunar event where you like find the envelope and stuff, you know, that they've done the mm -hmm. past couple of years. Um, basically, you spawn into the um, the map, and there's uh, five droplets to get. The killer can hold two, and then there's um, the survivors can hold one. And then you can de deposit these blood droplets that you collect just by walking into them into a blood basin, which are uh, around various parts of the map. And when you do that, you create a blood zone. And the blood zone is probably like, I don't know. 12 meters. 16, 16 meters? 12 meters? Okay. 12 meters, um, yeah. Now, now so no, I, level. I, I want to know what you think about the blood zone's effect. Okay? So, okay. when you create a blood zone, it has an effect for the survivor, and it has an effect for the killer. For the killer, when they're in the blood zone, they get uh, double lunge range. So, it's like a coup de grace. Like, Whoa, every okay. lunge, they can go twice as far. So it's a pretty big, pretty big deal. Well, I'm not going to try to influence your opinion, actually. Wait, no, 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 no. But you got to mention that there's a twice as long blood wipe after the hit, though. It doubles oh, the yes, cooldown that's on the true. hit, so it it's not just a buff; the, it's also a nerf. Yeah, yeah. It, Only it for a successful the, hit. The miss. Successful hit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it, it stacks with coup de gras. If you're wondering, so you can run coup de gras, and you can get oh gosh. you can get an additional lunch. Um, and for the survivors, the buff mm -hmm. that they get is that they're fifty percent quieter in the blood zone, and uh, their blood pools dry up fifty percent faster. And if they're crouching, they're 100% quiet and 100% faster on the blood. Really? So, you know, crouching, yeah. So urban evasion oh. is pretty strong. I don't know that. about that second part. Does that stack with... Oh, what's that hurt? Yes, it stacks with everything. Yes, it just always works. I wasn't thinking Iron Will. I was thinking of... Um, Lucky less Brick, blood, maybe? Less blood scratches. Lightweight? Hurt. No lightweight? Oh. Lightweight. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think, I'm thinking of lightweight. Oh, light, lightweight, lightweight is just in the game now because they broke scratch marks in the last patch. So everybody oh has God. lightweight right now. Really? If you got lightweight, you have like no scratch marks. Yeah. So if you wanted my opinion, it kind of sounds like the killer one is better. Yeah. I would agree is with that, that. Is that correct? Can I can I chime in and say wrong answer to both of you because none of them matter because it's 12 meters and you have to be in it when it initiates. It's like, it's like so pointless. 12 like, meters. Sorry. Thank you. It's I, so pointless. It's, it's such a dumb it's fucking It's a 12 mess. meter circle and you have to place it and the the basins well, are in areas where like totems usually are, which means yeah. that you don't get convenient placing spots. It's just random spots. Like, like if, if I'm a survivor main, I'm so upset that like, why is it that you don't get every single gen should be able to be covered by a blood basin? And the fact that they don't is fucking brain dead stupid to me. Like. Where does action take place in Dead by Daylight matches, typically? Traditional. Around around gens. Around yeah. gens. That's where the survivors game chat. go. Yeah. Toward, yeah, true, Gary, true. <laughs> you work you on the gens. You work Post on the gens. game chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. You work on the gens as survivor. You go to the gens to find survivors as killer. The fact that there's not a basin in range of every gen on the map is the ultimate fucking fumble. Like, I don't get it. So now you're mm -hmm. like, it's RNG where you're going to put the thing. The thing goes there. You when you place the basin, you get twenty seconds of the of the buff everywhere, but then it goes away. And the event item was supposed to double that, but the event item was broken, so they had to disable it. So it's it's a mess. Have they re-enabled it yet, or is no. it still? Yeah. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh, nope. Oh, oh, they really? gave us a million blood points to say sorry, but they haven't done anything no with the event way. offering. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's. I would say like it's fine. The event is fine. And the blood points are great when you can get it to work, when you're down to just throw the match to do the thing. Um, but it's the worst event they've ever done, full stop. Like there's no, the fact that the Lunar event is one of the better events in DVD, like it's one of the more unobtrusive, interesting, yeah. rewarding events Good rewards, done. good yeah. rewards, true. Great, great cosmetics. And then, yeah. you know, I know, John, you played Survivor and again, I will agree with you. I, I made the joke that nobody, it doesn't matter, but like the killer bonus, the buff is a little better. Because, like, you're never going to use well, the Heidi one as Survivor? Never. Like, no. Well, yeah, that's, like, that was my thing of, like, why would I even create a Blood Basin? Like, they just yeah. seem... Or, or, you know, create a, create a Blood Zone. There's too many... 
Droplet, Blood Basin, Blood Zone, like whatever. It's Why so complex for no reason, right? Yeah, that, so when, when, I, when, I, when I first read the description, I'm being like, what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. It what? was so unnecessarily it's, it's so complicated. Long. Do you know, do yeah. what you should, do you know what they could have done? Instead of blood basins, just put the blood into the generators. When the generator has got blood on it, make it worth 200% blood points or something. Easy. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, and then you have to have a blood droplet to just put, if you put it on a gen, it would have mm. fixed the entire event. If they didn't just have the RNG element of the random spawns, if you just use your blood droplet on the gen, made a zone around the gen, everybody gets their buff. Cool, we get extra points. Everybody gets extra points. That's where chases start. That's where hooks are usually by gens. Close enough. Yeah. And if, it, and if a killer or, kicks a generator that's or, got blood on it, make it completely fuck the gen. Here's a crazy idea. So it's you, a put risk. you put blood on the gen, and killers can put blood on the hooks, and then their hook zone is big, and uh, then everybody gets a buff. Crazy. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, I think I think with these events, they just need to go crazy with it. Like, everything is, like, worth, like, a million points. Everything, yep. like, has a fucking, you know, well, not literal go crazy fireworks, with but, like, the rewards, but simple with what you do. Yes, it always yeah, needs to be yeah, simple. Yeah. The most because Blood most... Basin was such a dumb addition. It's just Agreed. one step too far. The amount of times I put a basin, I put a blood drop in a basin and had the gen be this fucking close to the circle, or yeah. if you have like if there's one on the combine and the gen underneath the combine, it doesn't affect it because the oh blood is like on the upper. Let's consider it on the upper level, so it's oh, not, so it's on not the like a sphere. Level. It's so even like though a circle. they're literally right next uh... to each other. It's not. It doesn't yeah. have the skull merchant effect where it's like all the way up and down. I'm say, does skull like, merchants trap still work? Like still devices do, yeah. still work. So why does so Hank? Wh how does that happen? I don't know. Because that's uh, behavior, bro. There's also a, <laughs> there's also a memory leak in the game again that's causing people's games to crash. And then when your game crashes, it gives you the DC penalty. So a lot of streamers. It's not happening to everybody. It's not happening to me. But it's happening to a ton of like prominent streamers. Their their games are just crashing randomly. And then Great. they're getting a DC penalty. They can't even play the game. That started with the event. Damn, that sucks. I mean, I, I will say, I, was, I will say, with this event, like I like that it's something different, and mm -hmm. I like that they've been experimenting more. But it also troubles me that it's like the lights out modifier. It's like I like that they're doing something different, but this is not a good execution. Like, I hope that they continue to experiment, but the next one needs to be good. <laughs> they're literally balancing the game around casual players. Like they're literally like buffing killers like Huntress for some reason and Pig. Uh, you know, they're balancing right. the game to make like casual players be able to be more competitive. And then they're putting in an event that you like, I mean, how many times did you guys have to read it before you understood how it worked? It was like oh, so I, I, unnecessarily I, complex. I, I, re I, I read it once, didn't understand it, and I just played the game until I kind of got it. I, yeah. But I didn't care because it was a really ignorable event. Like, I, I had to read it, pay attention. play a match, read it again, play another match, and read it again. And I was like, oh, because, you know, there's just some questions that happen. When and then yeah, the, le and less the is more. And then yeah, the payoff, I, the payoff for understanding it is that it's a bad event. It's not even fun. It's like, right. you, just, you have to go look oh, for I get the, it. Why would yeah, I do it? You have to go look for the blood thing and you have to put it in the thing. And then you have yeah. to do the gen. And then you have to pull it out of the thing and put it in a different thing. And you gotta like cross your fingers. You'll find one that's close to something you can so, do. Like I had, I died on hook because a dude was coming and he went to go put the basin down before he unhooked me and I died too fast. He couldn't get it down to unhook me in time, no, but he wanted the gosh. extra points. Right, yeah. but I will say, if you abuse the event and you get lucky, you can get some crazy points. Because I had one match where the uh, the actual game was 173k blood points as survivor, 287 total in the match was my record so far. That's crazy. Yeah. So is that with, is that with a farming killer? No, that was in a competitive okay. like that was That's that killer was playing for for a gift card, bro. Okay, I was just planting it. I was just putting it down at every gen, putting it oh, down I see. and you then just... healing myself. I was like consistently playing. Yeah. the event objective and I escaped and I brought a cake and one it was I was with Kyle actually and Kyle brought a cake as well and so but with just two cakes 100% survivor bonus and playing the objective I got almost 300,000 blood points in one match as survivor pretty good that's pretty good that's pretty and it's gonna get better as the um, yeah. event uh, multiplier goes up it goes up yeah. to like six times now I think 500% yeah. is that it's, sounds a, like it's a, a, a group a, goal thing it's about yeah. to hit four. It probably hit four hundred percent now. It was about to hit it when I checked either okay. earlier today or last night. I can't remember, but it's close. Gotcha. Is it it's bad like, that I don't feel any drive to play the event still? Don't care how many blood points there is. It's almost like blood points have become meaningless at a certain point. I mean, oh. it, I like getting. Hang on, there's another sponsored section happening. I think. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I want to do that too. I want to do that. Hold too. it up. 
to the, the camera. Coke zero in the zone. Out. It's the Coke Zero <laughs> in the zone cam Stop with Sarah B. Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> Some point I added that I'm I'm sneaking for Coke Zeros in the back right here. God damn it. You guys know you use, no code running, <laughs> use code running rogue at checkout. You'll save twenty percent. I have a sh oh uh, creator God. shaker. Code Shameless. Gary. Shameless. Shameless plugs. Being advertised. You know what? They could they could I, sponsor the Spine Chill podcast. That would be amazing. All of them. I guarantee we get all, all of them. them. Oh, I'll yeah. sell my soul. I, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we, I, I'd love to do some ad read where we like cut to cut to us being like, oh, well, we have the Spine Chill podcast. Love rogue energy or whatever. Yes. Or holy, or holy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry Kiwi. So <laughs> helping me get through this podcast <laughs> oh, is HelloFresh. So no, as a we fellow do Coke Zero enthusiast, have you tried the Coke Spiced Zero? What? There's a Spiced? I would it try that right now. Yeah, yeah. It just came out. At least I is just it kind of like recently. cinnamon? No, it's taste? raspberry. It's raspberry oh, infused. That sounds delightful. It's pretty good. I just tried is it, it for the, last night for the first time. I saw it in stores and I was like, oh, I didn't know that they had this. I don't, I, wanna... I don't know if it's over here yet. It might be just for oh, okay. your region, John, but as soon as I see it, I will give it a shot. Is it so it's called Coke Zero Spiced, not Coke Zero Raspberry? Or is it just yeah, raspberry? Yeah, it's, it's called Coke Spiced. Uh, well, there's okay. Coke Spiced and then there's Coke Spice Zero, and that's. Yeah, you can get either. Mm, I'm all about it. All right. I'll definitely try that. Out. Also, sorry, I will have, have to try do to pick moments now. of the. Oh, sorry. What was that, Gary? I want to do sponsorships now so we can do like weird reading things. Yeah. And try and read I just like the idea of being like, wow. It's like weird like, wow. reading thing. It's like, wow, John, John, you you're... Know, like, like do a read, like try and like sell it. Yeah, yeah you mean an We can have fun read? with it. No, I yeah. Just, so, sorry, uh, I don't know the lingo. Gary, Gary, me, I didn't Gary, work me. in marketing. Here, that let me, weird, that reading weird reading thing. Reading thing. <laughs> let me go. You'd be like, yo, John, that, that idea really cooks. You know who else cooks is me with Factor. Two meals a day, $8 a meal. Saves on cleaning, saves on shopping. Gary can't even get through an intro to the podcast without giggling every time. You always find it hilarious <laughs> when we be... suddenly get a little quiet to say, it's, hey, everyone. It's, no, it's the it's the, the way John does goes, hey, everyone. It's just like <laughs> we go into business mode. It's yeah. always great. Yeah. Or dogs pull in a face. Or we've just we, we've just stopped it talking is. about whatever we were talking to, I don't you know, up is. until the, the John turn. There's usually dogs some pull pull in Strawberry Kiwi. Strawberry Kiwi. <laughs> My favorite. Favorite flavor. <laughs> Lol, haha. Lol, haha. Strawberry uh -huh. kiwi. Strawberry. Available now. Coke Zero. Available now. <laughs> There's a ten cent off. Ten cent off at checkout with Cord Basement. Uh, Cord Basement. Cord Basement. Cord Basement. Great. I love that. That's yeah, the movie. DVD event blows. Um, but yeah. it's a lot of blood points. It's a lot of blood yeah. points. <laughs> it's it's just a. Uh, I mean, DVDs been cooking and they have had i mean we've always had good things to say about the last year or so right the chapters have been good yeah the, the yeah things are fine hang on it's, what what podcast have you been i mean like we what? always <laughs> we always say no if you go back we and do. you listen yeah. we always have good things to say but it's, it's not the, the update it's not behavior it's just the game is yeah it's the soul it's, it's a competitive yeah. game now and it's now oh, i say like, back. yeah because so it's yeah. like they're doing great. It was awesome that they added Xenomorph. It was awesome that they added Nick Cage. The new killer. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Real horror killer. Awesome. The new survivor. Yeah. Awesome. Great cosmetics. Yeah. We, awesome. we had good reviews after every release. But I think that, what, it, what did I say to you in DMs, Gary? I said, the new killer is dope. Too bad you have to play it in DVD. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I said to him. <laughs> that's, like, that's like, which is so true. Every non-DVD player says that about when the, like there's a new release. They'll be just like, oh, Pinhead's in the game? Oh, so cool. I just wish I liked DVD. Mm. <laughs> and then that's it. Yeah. And they do that for... Chucky's but, in the game? Sick. Do I have to play DVD to play him, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. like when a, a horror IP, they were trying to do multiplayer games or horror IPs or ASIM games, and they're like, this Evil Dead game looks sick. Oh, it's multiplayer. Blah. Yeah. No. There, there's yeah. a little bit yeah. of obnoxiousness with that stuff, yeah. Like like Outlast Trials is a great game, but I've read some of the comments on like my, mine and and Gab's video that we posted and yours too. Thanks, so no, I think I saw one that was just like, I just wish it wasn't multiplayer. You can well, do it like a single player game, game, though. It's yeah, yeah it's you a, can play it single player. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a it's it's not it's a co-op game, isn't it? Like it's not yes. a multiplayer. It's a co-op game. They act like it's suddenly Overwatch. You know, I, it's right. like I, I play Stardew, but it's multiplayer. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, some yeah. people out there like refuse to play anything with any kind of social component. 
Like, no Angus, offense, but their life. we've had a lot of single-player games. So sometimes it would be quite fun to see if they could try something new, like, without Last yeah. Trials. And well, they and smashed we, it. And it's we, yeah, we had a blast playing out Last Trials with our friends. I want to so. play more. I was, I was... I was an Outlast Trials hater when it first got announced because they were really emphasizing the VR thing. And I was oh, like, yeah. VR, Outlast, multiplayer? I would rather have Outlast 3 than that. But then it came out, and I played it, and I was like, this is sick. I would much rather have this than Outlast 3. <laughs> like, yeah. right. this is a new spin on things. So Yeah. Admittedly, Outlast Trials, they did very well with it. And yeah. not always the case. But, yeah, it's just, you know, so, sorry it wasn't yet another kind of six seven hour horror experience yeah um, it would be nice to have can a just, couple just more play, horror just play outlast again games. yeah you can just replay outlast and half of outlast too <laughs> before it gets both. bad well i mean there are there's new horror m online games coming out this year what we got uh, what about last year the graveyard chapter or whatever what's let it, it die we need to move on to <laughs> no, uh, you my book sorry, club I mean, just people pick for this <laughs> week um, <Sorry>. oh, <laughs> no. oh we almost made it to a last year combo let's go John. <laughs> what's the what's the book club yeah so it's my turn to pick for book club um just to review we've all uh gone around so far we started with alan wake 2 we played some chill as art games that gary picked uh we played hitma space outlaw some of us did. all right gary. i'm sorry i'll make it up to you gary. i swear to god i will I'll make Doug's, it been on, Doug's been on fire. Doug played all of Hitler's Space yeah, yeah, yeah. Outlaw. Yeah, That's we played true. Pokemon Unite with Doug. Doug is very then... high on the tree branches this week. That's right. That was plus yeah. one branch. Um, I, I, I played other single player horror games and put them on YouTube. Like, I'm doing stuff. You know? Yes, yeah, Doug true. has started uplink to his game. YouTube channel, by yeah. the way, oh. which is linked in the description oh, if you're curious. You. All of our channels are. So, um, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm going to pick the game this time. What, Gary? See, <laughs> you could never do an ad read. I pulled the face. Face. I did the thing. Me and Doug did the thing. We do it. We had you a never do an ad read, Gary. I could do it. I could smash it. No, no way. You write like me an ad. Wait, tell, wait, wait, make, make me next for next season. Make me a, a fake one. I'll read it. I'll do it. I'll smash it. A John fake like, ad read. Yeah, <laughs> but if, we, if, we get, if we get a sponsor, we could do a real one. So we're going to do a free ad read. They just like make up a product. Oh, okay. Doug's YouTube channel. All right. right. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll write you like an ad copy for Doug's YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah. and then you can try yeah. to read. Yeah. Doug should write it. Doug should write an ad read yeah, for Doug, Gary Doug, to can read. You, can you write me an ad read for your channel? This channel, horror game's good. I can figure <laughs> it out. No, I can figure it out. I can figure it out. Type, figure type it, out. it up for me, please. On a literal typewriter? I don't own one of those anymore. You're asking someone who can barely wash his hands after he used the toilet to write something. True. You should pick someone better next time. It's true. <laughs> Christ. Anyway, anyway yeah, John, we'll, we'll okay. get an ad read for you, Gary. Ow, Lloyd. Anyway. Whoa, I just heard that. I just caught up. Ow. Anyways, what can we get book club game? John, John yeah, book club, right. please. My soul. So we've all, picked, <laughs> we've all picked one game for book club, and now it's come back around, and it's my turn. And I had a couple options. I've actually got a list that if we get far enough, we'll go through the entire list. Ooh, but I wanted exciting. to pick a game that... All three of you haven't played, so uh, I looked on Steam, and as far as I know, none of you have played this. But it's a game that I've played before and that I want to replay and experience again. It's a game called Silvio. It's an indie mm. horror game. Um, it was uh, created by a developer called Stroboscop. It released about seven or eight years ago, and it's an electronic voice phenomena horror game oh. where you hunt down ghosts with electronic voice equipment. And you like uh, isolate little audio blurbs and hints and things that the ghosts say, and uh, it's a really interesting atmospheric game. And I'd like to hear uh, your thoughts on it. It's very quirky, very offbeat. It's I don't think I've ever played anything like it since or before. And uh, yeah, it's I a think, weird yeah, one. I think we, we spoke about this game before, and I remember. You wanted to play it a long time ago so I'm very excited you picked it isn't there yes. a sequel Didn't there, wasn't there a Silvio 2 there is a sequel and there's going to be a Silvio 3 uh, coming oh, out wow. this year so um, it's a solo developer he made it like all by himself and uh, so it's got like that uh, to me it's got that like unique vision that we've talked about of like one person just doing everything hmm. um, it, it is a weird one uh, it's kind of got an ASMR component to it the lead voice actress for the main character kind of whispers her lines. So um, that's something that some people kind of 
have a bit of an issue with, but the gameplay is really interesting, and um, yeah, just be interested to hear your thoughts on it. Am I going to play the game like, what? What no, did she say? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. You, it won't be like that. But you know, some people, some people don't like that kind of tingly sound. Mm. It's not, it's not too bad. But like, I didn't have an issue with it at all. But I just want to put it out there as like, it might be something that bothers you. <laughs> Other than that, it's, it's very cool, though. Um, oh, I'm excited. I'm glad you picked this. Yeah. Would you say that the the game does a really good job in the first chapter of, like, kind of getting you used to its quirkiness? I would say so, yeah. There's, um... Yeah, the first chapter is a pretty good uh, capsule of what you can expect from the rest of the game. And I don't think that this is necessarily a game that you have to complete. I would say it's preferable, you know, for a full discussion. But I don't, th I don't think that you have to beat it. Um, how how it, long is it, roughly? Seven and a half hours says how long to beat. Okay. Yeah, so it's not yeah. terribly long. I can do that. Um, but there are there are like a lot of puzzles, and um, you know, so your mileage may vary. Um, but I think you know, if, as long as you get get a few hours into it, you'll get like a feel for what it is, and you'll experience most of the breadth of the game. Would you say like, do you think it's got a problem where like the protagonist kind of voices or lines emotionlessly, kind of almost inaudibly, but like the real star of the game is like the EVP audio equipment and the yes. sound design? Yes, the star of the game is the EVP equipment. It's it's like nothing I've seen in any other game. Like it's, the it's very maybe cool. the most innovative, unique horror yeah. game of 2015. Yeah, yeah. But it overstays its welcome a bit towards the end. Are you well, reading you my like Steam review out. right now? Still? So I found John's Steam review from okay. 2015. Like, you posted a sound, Steam review. These sound very familiar. These thoughts. I'm like these agreeing are... with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like verbatim reading it out to see if you recognized it. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, really I, I agree with that. I I haven't played it since you know, it you came didn't. out in 2015, so I'd like to see what I think of it now. Um, it is worth noting, the developer did something like kind of weird. Um, the original version of the game doesn't exist anymore. Uh, oh. The original version of the game that released in 2015 that I reviewed, um, that you're reading off of, um, is, is no longer available. The developer actually just like remastered the game like updated the graphics and I think like certain areas and pieces of gameplay. Um, and I haven't played the remastered version that's been updated. So, so it's uh, kind of like a first time for you wow. as well. It'll be kind of, it'll be kind of like a first time. Yeah. A little bit. You but, can tell that's, that's from love. That's a developer that believed in their own passion projects and yeah. Yeah. Went for it. That's really I'm sweet. excited. It looks neat. I just checked it out on Steam. It looks pretty neat. I'm looking yeah. Forward to it. All right, awesome. I'm going to go in with my full judgmental brain. <laughs> I, I would expect nothing less. How is that yeah. any different from normal, Gary? <laughs> I know, I just thought I'd say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just All hope right. that the blunderbuss that shoots potatoes doesn't annoy you too much, Gary. Yes, that's a, a real what? thing. There's a blunderbuss what? that shoots potatoes, yeah. I mean, that sounds I'm in. delightful. That yeah, sounds yeah. right up my alley. You, you, you mostly use it to solve puzzles, just so you know. Ew. Okay, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, you shoot the potatoes to like knock over stuff or things like that. Like okay, I said, it's a I've quirky given, game, but okay, I've given you a clever great. dinosaur award on Steam. I'm gonna stop reading this now. But oh, great, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, no, that sounds like an amazing game. Actually, I'm I'm well into that. It's a good pick. Thank you, John. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. I'm I'm, I'm excited to talk you, yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm not gonna thank him until after the game. I'm gonna decide if I like it. I'm like sure John will be like... spending the next two weeks. Unable to sleep at night, swaying, yeah, in tossing bed. and turning. Yeah. I hope Gary and Doug like my book club game. I hope they like my book club game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I, th I think y'all will at least be interested by it, and that's you know whether or not you love it or uh, you know can't can't wait to play the sequel. That's you know that's totally up in the air. I, I understand that, but I think it, you'll at least be interested in in what happens in it. Can mm. I 
make a small suggestion and feel free to cut this from the episode if you decide not to implement it but would you be up for adding a link in the description of the video for people to check out the game if they want to play it themselves oh yeah that's a good idea yeah, a good i should idea, start doing yeah. that yeah there's a little i've seen a little discussion in the discord in the spine chill discord like about the book club and i've been trying to be more active in the spine chill discord just because it seems mm -hmm. like there's a pretty loyal army of people that are chatting a lot about our, dvd our spine chill army the spine chillers <laughs> spine hey, spine chillers What's up? It's your boy Rudder Man checking in. But no, <laughs> so yeah, I think it'd be really neat if a bunch of people jumped on book club and then we had little spoiler free conversations in there where you could just spoiler tag, you know, people haven't finished the game yes. or not. Uh, it could be fun for us to maybe talk about the playthrough in the Discord. Community. Yeah. yeah, I did want to mention that like we have a Spine Chill Discord. There's a link in the description, whether you're on Spotify or YouTube or whatever, it should be there. And we actually have a, a text channel where you can discuss that week's uh, book club game. So if you're playing along with us and you'd like to talk about it with other people and you can't wait for the next episode, then that's a place where you can talk about it. Also, um, and as Seno said, you can feel free to cut this as well. Um, <laughs> but ne next week, if we do talk about that YouTube video, my one, like, because I, I definitely got a bump because we mentioned it last season. Uh, I would like to talk about it because I'm sure people have watched it and would be interested to yes. hear that discussion. I, I would love to I, talk about and, it. I have and only. Oh, I'm so I'm so excited. And Doug to talk has about it. Doug has watched it and is I I, I need to Doug's watch it. Excited still, to talk so. to him about it. Yeah, we'll talk about we'll we'll, we'll have Gary's Comp Corner return. <gasps> yeah. Oh yeah. Comp the Corner. Corner. Yeah. Dawn and segment. the quarry. Gary's Comp Corner returning next episode. Yeah. Which you haven't watched my Until Dawn vs. The Quarry video, you'll come find it on my YouTube channel, which is in the description below. See, I could do an ad read. Very I could good, fucking Gary. do it. It was, a little, could... it was a bit smiley, but it was, it was a bit oh, I'm sorry. It was a I'm bit sorry. <laughs> a little a little <laughs> self satisfied, but we get the idea. I've got to practice, I've got to work on it. Yeah. Can we do some training in the week? Maybe one that's more than like five seconds long. Um Yeah. Like give me like a minute. Yeah. And we need you to we need you to show for something that isn't you yeah it's <laughs> true old. yeah yeah because yeah. you shell for yourself all the time even in private yeah. conversations gary will shell for yes. himself yeah. yeah we need to find something that you don't give a fuck about and get you to sell it like you love it is that why you mentioned my youtube channel or <laughs> no <laughs> no <laughs> anyway so that's so, funny. so... <laughs> gary's gonna spit that's Gary's the first time. It's holy, and he's trying to sell it. Gary, what yeah. flavor are you drinking right now? What flavor is that? Uh, it's raspberry tea. What? Like iced tea, raspberry what? iced tea. Raspberry iced tea, strawberry kiwi. What, yeah, what about strawberry the strawberry kiwi? kiwi? Strawberry strawberry kiwi. I'll, I'll get some. Although I think that's my. This probably has caffeine. In it. Although that was your favorite strawberry. Oh, kiwi. have you been drinking the? <laughs> have you been drinking the caffeine ones? No, 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 no. No, okay. I drink mm. hydration and like iced tea. That's oh. awesome. A little bit. I, don't, I, don't I love that. I love the focus that a lot of these gaming energy companies are putting on like hydration lines rather than just straight caffeine drinks because um, yes, I think that people could use more hydration and more intelligent hydration too because like just drinking mm. straight water all day isn't nearly as good for you as drinking water with electrolytes and all these hydration drinks have electrolytes which is like yeah again I'm I'm really big on encouraging healthy choices and so it's good that like G and the last thing I need is caffeine yeah yeah true. Well, I just think that like a lot of people want to drink something that doesn't taste like water, and it's nice for yeah, them to have an true. option that that's got electrolytes and whatnot. It's going to be healthy. I genuinely Jack and have a problem with drinking water. Is like, I don't know if it's like my body is just so used to my terrible fucking diet and whatever by this point, but I, when I start drinking more water, I basically just pee it all out, and then my skin begins to break out. It's oh. like. Being hydrated makes my body react badly, almost. But I think it might be because I'm not getting enough electrolytes. So suddenly, I'm going from just like coffee and Coke Zero to like coffee, Coke Zero, and water, and it's like too much, and my body can't handle it. And it might be because I don't have enough electrolytes. So I probably could do with this hydration thing. Me and yeah. Doug have options for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh I would, my I, god. I would assume. No, I would assume, and this is this is who I am as a person. Like, I would assume Gary's is like UK based because all the people I've seen. Yeah, mine's in Germany. Promoting yeah, yours, in the UK. Yeah, I, I've seen all the people I've seen promoting your line are in EU, so it'd probably be cheaper and more cost effective for you to talk to Gary, just because Rogue Rogue <laughs> does ship to the EU, but the the shipping costs are pretty high. So. I want all of this cut. I feel so uncomfortable about. Why? It. Why? <laughs> 
It's like a ad read segment over yeah. here. I, uh, it's, we're just talking nice. about the things we're doing, man. They emailed yeah, me true. as well, Holy, actually, funnily enough. You should oh. do it. They're nice. To sponsor. Bye. Well, there you go. Talk to them. <laughs> ask them about the strawberry kiwi. Yeah. <laughs> strawberry kiwi. My favorite. Nice, I'll just send them an email back now just saying, please hydrate me. All lower yeah. caps. No punctuation. Do it. See what happens. A picture of you. They'll be like, we got to get this guy a box. <laughs> oh, my God. He looks like he's dying. <laughs> you look unhealthy. Yeah. The tubs are massive as well. Do you want to see one? So, We're cutting this. This is season <laughs> yet. This I would say cut. this has been a great season. <laughs> Hate to cut it short, but we got to go. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in. Uh, once again, we... We we love hearing from all of you, and we what? we appreciate all of you. And what? What's Gary? this segment going to be labeled as in like the timestamp? <laughs> the end cut, cut for time, just maybe? shilling. Yeah. yeah. What timestamp? This is not going yeah. in the yeah, final. Yeah, going in. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, big thanks <laughs> to all of our fans in Romania. Hugs and kisses on behalf of John, Gary, Sino, and Doug. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Hugs and kisses. Bye.